we should be live. Uh, and hopefully with everything going well, uh, the intro came up and everybody's seen it and it made a good sound and it makes people happy. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, good evening everybody. Thanks all of you who are currently in the chat, uh, who've been waiting for a, a little while. We've uh, got Kresimir here, he was nice and early. Uh, we've also got Matt, Molly Haggis Muncher. And we've got, let's see, Steve, Whiskey Brewer. Good evening. Hope you uh, enjoy the samples that got to you. I know one of them broke. Sorry about that. And who else have we got? We got FOMO. What's that all about? So FOMO, Willie, is the uh, fear of missing out, basically. And we have Tony in as well. Good evening, Tony. So originally, oh, we've got other people in. I'll go quickly. We got Bart here, uh, we got Mark, a whiskey bond, we've got Mark Slinger, and we've also got Jimmy Jazz. Good to see you, Jimmy. So, yeah, today I was going to be doing blind sample swaps with Stevie, and he unfortunately is under the weather. He was under the weather yesterday, and he's not managed to get over it. So when I took his samples over today, uh, he told me that he wouldn't be able to make it. So kind of had to improvise and the secret special guest who was going to be joining us halfway through the talk is now going to be on for basically the full thing. So he's filling in for Stevie almost. Um, he's a bit better looking than Stevie but I'll leave that up to, to you a lot to decide. So <laughs> Steve Whiskey Brewer said no Stevie tonight, uh, he's away. Well I'll catch you later Steve, <laughs> have a good one. So we're going to... Um, I've sent our secret special guest some samples, uh, luckily, and they're not blind. One of them is a, a mystery malt, so it's technically blind, uh, but the other one, he knows what it is, uh, and it's Lady of the Glen, Glen Elgin, 15-year-old. So we're going to drink those whiskies, see what each other think of those whiskies, and then we're going to kind of discuss the FOMO effect, uh, which is, for everybody who doesn't know what FOMO is, it's the fear of missing out. So I think that affects a lot of us. Um, especially with the way market employees are these days, you get a lot of um, media kind of forcing your hand into buying a whiskey almost, or it feels that way anyway. So without further ado and without me blathering on anymore, we'll get the guest in. And I think most of you will know who he is, um, probably by his old Instagram handle, and hopefully you might know his face. Hello. Hello, this guys. <laughs> Cheers. How's it going? Very well, very well. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm not sure uh, if I can uh, keep up with your English, of course, in some Dutch. So uh, up front, I want to apologize for any Dutchisms uh, or Bartisms. Uh, I think. Uh, I don't um, know. Have you ever heard our prime minister speak English? Uh, I have not, actually, no. I've uh, not. It sounds a bit like, yes, ladies and gentlemen. It is about time that we uh, we change things in our country because it's not going very well. <laughs> so, obviously, I don't want to sound like that, but yeah. our way of speaking English is heavily influenced by American English. Of course, us classy folk smoking cigars and drinking whiskey, we want to sound more British. British. But I guess it, that takes some training. Well, I think sometimes when I was uh, speaking to you earlier before the live stream, there was uh, some English mannerisms in there. So, uh, but yeah, as um, Jim's pointed out anyway, he uh, says, all right, all. He says, uh, yeah, Stuart's English is awful anyway, which is true. It's uh, it's pretty bad, but it's better than, oh, I'm trying to do an Irish accent on camera. It's not working. Maturity tree, welcome. Welcome to uh, Jim's Whiskey Novice. No, that's bad. Um, but yeah, my, my English can be bad, uh, especially when I'm on camera and I'm trying to think of words. I mean, the other day I couldn't even think of the word sentimental, so... Oh, uh, you've got okay. two samples I sent you, the uh, Lady right. of the Glen and the Mystery Malt. Uh, I've I've had my Lady of the Glen poured for a good 20 minutes, half an hour now, and I know you poured yours maybe 20 minutes ago. So uh, right. why don't we get down to it and see what you think of this 15-year-old? Uh, All right. It's nice and pink from the port, and there's also a lot of sediment in there. So we're off to a good start. Oh, it's a bit sour. Oh, 
Yeah, it is a little bit pink, and um, the reason for uh, buying this actually, and I kind of wanted to show you, I'll show you on uh, later on Instagram, I'll post it on Instagram, was um, we were at the uh, Edinburgh Whiskey Festival and Lady of the Glen had an 11 year old Tawny Port Glen Elgin that they weren't advertising or they just had a bottle basically for anyone who kind of knew about it to go up and be like, oh, can we get a wee taste of that? Um, so luckily Stevie, for some reason, knew about it and you should have seen this, it was like pink, strawberry jam in a glass. It was the pinkest thing I've ever seen. Uh, so that's why I ended up buying the Glen Elgin uh, 15 because I tasted the 11 year old. However, it's not as pink as the 11 year old, but it's still, oh, I think, just as nice. Mm, it's good. Nice. Reminds me a lot of the, since we're talking about FOMO later, the, the Glen Elgin port edition for uh, Ralphie's anniversary. Oh yeah. It's, it's it's basically in the same ballpark. I don't think I've had it. I don't know what this would be close uh, to me for. I've, I've, I feel like I've not had a lot of Tawny Port. Um, I think I had the Glen Scotia Ruby Port, but it's nothing like that. I think it's quite rich. Uh, like you said, there is a bit of sourness. I don't know if that comes from um, some sort of fruit, like a citrus fruit or a... I don't know, maybe a grapefruit or something. I think it's quite, you are right, it's quite sour. I'm so jealous of the cigar. <laughs> it's, uh, I think there's figs there, blackcurrant. For me, blackcurrant's quite powerful in this. Yes. I actually quite like Glen Elgin. I had a couple of Glen Elgins, very raw Glen Elgins, only bourbon cast matured. And yep. usually quite young, but it's very recognizable. This is my uh, first bottle of it, first um, purchase, but I have since then purchased the uh, Carn Moore 11 year old Glen Elgin, which I think is uh, sherry. So it'll be good to see how those compare and see what the distillate's like. Mm, it's really good. I'm going to add a little bit of water. I know you're not a big fan, but just want to see what happens. I've added water to this, um, and I think it adds a little bit more nuttiness influence to it. Yeah, I think you get a bit more walnut coming through. So it's uh, 15 years in ex bourbon and then four months in a uh, Tawny Port. And I think that, well, it says Tawny Port's from uh, Josepha. Um, I believe that's Porto. What I always want to know is why, uh, how they decide the length of the second maturation or the finishing uh, because it's only four months. Yeah. Because that, the weird thing is the, the Glen Allegy, uh board for Ralphie's anniversary. I think that spent its full full maturation in, in, in port casks. And this is only four months, but it's really uh, reminiscent of that malt. Uh, albeit that this one is a lot more uh, savory and uh, yeah. there's a sour note to it. Well, whilst the Glen Allegy is very sweet, but I think that's a very sweet whiskey uh, anyway. So yeah. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure how they judge. I might uh, the guy that owns it, Gregor. I might uh, contact him and speak to him because uh, he's the one with the expertise. I'm not sure if they do it on taste, whether they um, put it in the cask for I don't know a couple of weeks or something, and they keep sampling it over the weeks so or how they do it. Uh, it'd be quite interesting mm -hmm. to uh, see. But yeah, you're right. They, there was a Deanston I bought the uh, Cadenhead, um, and it's uh, it's matured and run for a full eleven years. So it's it's quite interesting to see how. Obviously, different people are doing it differently. Uh, I don't remember when, but just a little while ago, somebody explained the difference between maturation in a ruby port and tawny port. Right. There's a, apparently, there's a huge difference, but I, I don't remember what it was, of course. You don't remember what the difference was? No, no. One uh, of the two is, is very uh, invasive, and the other one is more subdued, easygoing. So I suppose if you're using four months, it will be the more invasive one. Yeah. Whereas the the port used for the Ralphie bottling, if you're going to leave it in there for 13 years, it must have been the other one. But I don't know which which is which. Maybe somebody yeah. in the comments uh, yeah, can help possibly. out. Well, I mean, this is Tawny Port, so this might be the more um, kind of aggressive one. But I don't even know what the difference between Tawny and Ruby Port is. I think one mm. main difference is just the age of it. Um, but someone's already discussing FOMO in the uh, the, the chat about the wee beastie from Ardbeg. Um, ah, right. <laughs> you've got, have you got one? Oh yeah, 
I don't think it's came out in the UK yet, which is quite, it's a bit annoying, but. No, I think the, I actually won it in a contest. I wasn't planning oh, yeah. on buying it because I, I was sort of uh, done with art back with all the stupid releases. And uh, as I said, uh, I made a couple of puns about next editions and uh, what yeah. I should call it. Uh, but then I won a contest and I got it anyway. And I would never, ever, ever buy this over the 10 year old. Oh, really? So, yeah, uh, I think the 10 year old is their staple and it's their, their, definitely one of their best, if not their best whiskey that they're going to release. Um, however, I want to try the, the five. Like, I've got to give kudos to them. I'm in the same mindset as you. If I've kind of. Oh, I'll send you a sample. You oh, can try. <laughs> That'd be great. Because I think, I think, yeah, Next. I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy that they've put five year on there. I'm happy that they just haven't left it as a, 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 a non-age statement. And I think that's quite, uh, you've got to give your hats off to them almost. But I'm in the same mindset as, I was almost buying the black, hard big black. I had it in my basket right. for a hundred pound and this was a part of my FOMO. I saw it all over social media and I was like, oh my God, I need to buy that. Everyone's buying it, it must be good. But I heard mixed reviews, and then I had it in my basket. It was a hundred pound with delivery, and I was like, "Why the hell am I buying this at a hundred pound? Yeah. Am I stupid?" Uh, and I was like, "Yes." I felt exactly the same, and I I think I expressed my thoughts about it to uh, to Multi Haggis Muncher uh, Matthew. Yeah. And uh, we were supposed to meet up this May uh, or wait no a April because I was planning a trip to go to Glasgow and uh, also to Aaron. And uh, I think he uh, he arranged uh, a sample uh, of the black mm. uh, for us to enjoy, but that's uh, that will have to be postponed, unfortunately. Thank you, COVID. <laughs> um, so just quickly on the palette for me on this one, there's black sherry. Um, I get espresso. I get a Madeira cake like sponge. But um, sprinkled with crushed walnuts, <laughs> black mm. currant, and like a toffee. Uh, I don't know if you guys, if you've had tablet before um, in Scotland, mm -hmm. but yeah, like a tablet kind of sweetness. Um, but it is still quite. I think there's an oak influence that's kind of bitter um, or, or spicy. Uh, a little bit of vanilla on the finish in that, but overall, I think it's quite a sweet, also sour dram. <laughs> I love it. It's uh, it's a lot better than the the Ralphie bottling. Uh, that's good that's, to know. That's, that's the one I keep going back to because it's the only point of reference in terms of port maturation I have right now. Uh, I have a vague memory of one of those Aaron Smugglers editions, which was also matured in port. Yeah. But that was also very peaty, so that is a completely different ballpark. But this is actually quite lovely. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at the ratings on Whiskey Base, and I thought. Why is it so underrated? But I think one of the uh, voters voted it 78, whilst the rest was all above 85. So right, I think that's I just the, really didn't like it. I mean, I don't use um, whiskey base too often for like ratings. I know a lot of people use it, but if I was to have this when I first opened it uh, and I was reminiscing of the 11 year old that I had at the festival, I would have said this is garbage. But the kind of the further down, once I got past the neck really and the shoulder, this is superb and it's opened up and it's actually a lovely whiskey and you can tell like I mean I've I'm almost finished it and I've not had it yep. for that long. It was originally supposed to be 16 year old and they uh, they recalled the bottle and got all the labels changed because uh, technically the the age is 15 year old and the SWA weren't happy with it so. Wow well it's absolutely delicious and I, th yeah. I would almost say that I liked it a little bit more uh, on full strength. Maybe I overdid it a little bit with the water because uh, before that sourness, that completely dissipates when you add a little bit of water. And I kind of like the balance between the sweet and sour. Now it's more mellow, more approachable, easier to... Uh... Oh, sorry. <laughs> did I say Glasgow? Jesus. I think you did, yeah. It's, it's Glasgow uh... or, uh, or Glasgow. Oh. Uh... So sorry. We got uh, Dad's wee Dramen. How's it going? I need to remember that uh, your speech, your pronunciation is way more upfront in the mouth. So you say yeah. Glasgow. Yeah, Glasgow. Glasgow. And for us, no, I'm just elongating it. But uh, 
our way of speaking is more here in uh, in the throat. So you're easier going to different vowel, yeah, different vowel pronunciation. I, I'd say it's a bit different. Evening, Erwin. Uh, yeah, I am. Um, I am like proper at pron uh, pronunciating when I'm on camera. Uh, I'm, I, when I work, where I work, I work with a lot of English people, and if I do not speak slow and if I do not speak like this, they will not understand me. Whereas ah. if I'm in the pub, if I was in the pub with uh, Matt, I'd probably be speaking a little bit faster uh, and a little more slang. But it's it's hard because you end up wanting to trip up yourself because you're trying to think of the right words and the right way to pronounce them. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Willie said he wasn't going to buy the wee beast there. I had that up there. Uh, we've got Whiskey Resource, I'm pretty sure Mark, he said the same thing with the black. He didn't follow through. I actually sent him a, a sample of the uh, Lady of the Glen and I also sent uh, Luna over in Germany a, a sample of the Lady of the Glen. Uh, so I believe um, I believe uh, Whiskey Resource really enjoyed the uh, the Glen Elgin that I sent him. I think it was his I first Glen Elgin as well. The thing with the wee beastie is that they, of course, it's it's good of them to put a five-year-old uh, age statement on there. Uh, yeah. At the same time, uh, I think they, they they listen to a couple of the Ralphie reviews, and they're just jumping on the bandwagon. Oh, look at us! We're so cool. We put oh, and we even have a, a red label. Uh, what is it? A red? Uh, yeah, I don't know what you call that. A seal. Yeah. Seal, right? A, a red seal. It almost looks like a wine bottle. It's so different. Woo! And it's supposed to be very peaty. And we've all been indoctrinated with that uh, younger peated whiskey is more expressively peaty. But in this yeah. case, it, it doesn't come across like that. No. I would. I tried it next to the uh, Anno, the right. Ten, uh, the Cory, and the Ugi. And surprisingly, surprisingly, the Anno is definitely the most peaty one. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because for me, out of the uh, Isla whiskies, it's always Ardbeg that I would go to when I was wanting an Isla and I was wanting peat, um, especially the 10 when it comes to supermarket whiskies. The 10 whiskies, is perfect. I'll, I'll always go for the 10. Uh, but I mean, the ones I've had recently, it's not necessarily the peat, I just don't think the uh, process is correct. I had the um, the drum, which was rum, and I, I had it with right. Stevie. He bought a bottle and he's got the, uh, the committee, committee reserve bottle or whatever. And anyway, we had the normal one, the, like the official release for everyone, and it felt like the marriage or the, the maturation of the rum just wasn't there, and all that was there was Ardbeg peat, and it was just overwhelming for me, and I didn't get any nice rum flavours through, and I was like, this is a complete mess. Well, uh, you're a guy who really appreciates the rum finish, right? Well, that's it, yeah, I really do like a kind of rum finish, and I just thought, this is uh, <laughs> not, not, uh, not hitting the mark at all. And there's been recent ones in recent years that I've had. Uh, the only one that I can say that I really enjoyed recently was the Ardbeg Kelpie. I thought that was a beautiful whiskey. Um, but even that, they're all non each statements. And how how much are you willing to spend on just because it's Ardbeg? I've had uh, the Kelpie here on Ardbeg Day, I think it was three years ago or something. Uh, they actually had a party here in Amsterdam right. uh, for Ardbeg Day, which was great. But we showed up late, so we only had the last little bit left. <laughs> uh, but it was free uh, Ardbeg 10 all night with yeah. good bites, barbecue. It was a lovely, oh, lovely yeah. setting. And they dressed everything in seaweed. Oh, yeah. uh, so the whole vibe was perfect. Uh, but the drum I had when I was in Isla last year in March, uh, and it was such a disappointment. Yeah, I, 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 can, I could agree more. This is same in, with them. In, in our group, there were five or six seasoned Ardbeg drinkers and they all needed at least two bottles. Oh, really? Even though it was just the good. FOMO, right? The FOMO That's again. FOMO. And oh, and collecting, blah, blah, blah. blah. Well, uh, we, we had the grooves as well at the distillery and that was, a, for me, another, I can't remember what that was finished in or what it was matured in, but I felt like that was a complete mess. Um, and I think that's, if Stevie was on here, he'd probably say, like, he's got a FOMO with the uh, Ardbeg committee releases. I mean, he's got pretty much most of the committee really sees <laughs> um, and then he ends up buying the bottle as well so he can actually try the whiskey obviously mm -hmm. the lower the lower abv expression but yeah i think fomo is a real i mean the one of these whiskies that i wanted to talk about was this um i think it's bartels it's a 23 year old uh from the space side distillery that do like dallas doing that it's natural color it's an oloroso octave uh, jesus sherry bark cast but it says sherry bark but i'm pretty sure it was octave 
Uh, it's cash strength, 49.6%. On paper, this will be an amazing whiskey. Um, it's 50 CL, and there were so many people that were telling me to buy this. They were saying, you need to buy this. And I think it's okay. And there's one I actually kind of regret buying to an extent, because I, I think it could have done with less years, and that was a definite FOMO for me. I felt like I was going to miss out if I didn't have this. Um, but from following your channel, uh, I have noticed that you're not that keen on uh, overly sherry whiskies, right? It's not your cup of tea. Yeah, well, I used to obviously used to love sherry, and I think it's something I'll come back to. Um, but yeah, it's probably that's probably one of the reasons for not enjoying it as much as I'm going down the other side of the curve where I want to try completely different expressions other than just the sherry whiskies. Um, so that's maybe something to do with it. I just feel like you're getting all the same flavours. But for me, that was just too. It was like too sickly. And I felt like it could have done with 19 years or 18 years in the sherry cask instead of the full uh, 23. Sounds like a lot of time for uh, for such an active sherry cask. Jesus Christ. Well, I mean, the uh, I got a single cask blade Atho, uh, the same kind of situation, an octave cask, and they've only matured it for 11 years, so I'm sure that'll be a lot better and a lot more delicate. Um, Willie, I've been down the hype road too many times to bite these days, so I plow my own furrow as regards whiskey choice tonight. It's 13 year old cast strength in the Linkwood uh, last bottle, so no follow as it's all gone. Uh, Was that fear of losing out? Yeah, fear of losing out. Yeah, Willie's a, a big uh, uh, believer in independent bottlings, and you can't fault him for that because you rarely have a miss with an independent bottle, but I think nowadays you're, you end up start paying more for independent bottlings as well. The price is just going up and up. Yeah. I think it's uh, on the same bar with distillery editions now. If you look at the, the trend at Bunahaben, uh, yeah. Lefchik, uh, Balakin, and Edradar, yeah, yeah. uh, they're all with 12 year olds, 13 year olds, easily going up to the 100, 100 euro or even 100 pound mark. It's, uh, so that's basically uh, Adelphi pricing, right? Yeah, that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll show a couple others of my uh, FOMO and my. Uh, collection and one that obviously you've talked I've talked to you about before is the Arden Smuggler series uh, when I was kind of new to whiskey I bought the the first or one of them I bought the number three in the auction and I bought it because it looked cool and I was like oh I need to have that and then once I bought that one I had to have the collection didn't I I mean you can't just and it's the same with these um, little uh, explorer series from Arden uh, they're, but they're gorgeous right but they are Actually, those series, that series, I had uh, uh, two of them in, as a sample. Yeah. They're absolute value for money. They're great oh, whiskeys. Yeah. I had but the, the uh, Smuggler series, yeah. Jesus Christ, those were session drams. Really? You really had to sit down, wrestle with it for one and a half hours, adding water, not adding water, figuring out what the hell was going on. Yeah. So disjointed. I think I, think... I liked the first version was actually very good but for the price yeah no i got it as a gift so yeah. and then uh, i said next year uh i'll have the same because then it, it'll be the second edition but i yeah. never got to the third i think um i think they're probably trying to kind of make they're obviously trying to get some money because they're, they're well they're relatively new but they're not that new anymore i suppose um i don't know it was probably it's, it's a weird thing. So they do, they've done a lot of kind of these, like, what was the other one? The Devil's Punch Bowl or something like that. Yeah, had, those, those were great as well. But yeah, the Explorers, I had the Brodick Bay in the pot still and the Lacranza Castle in the pot still. Uh, I preferred the Brodick Bay. I thought it was absolutely outstanding. Uh, I just need to try the uh, the next one now. But uh, <laughs> one, <laughs> one whiskey that sits on my shelf, and I'm not opening it um, because I've had it. Stevie bought a bottle um, and we actually opened his. And the reason I'm not opening mine is because I had Stevie's and I don't think it's worth opening. Um, and it wasn't worth buying for sure. It's the Glenfiddich Winter Storm. And this was when I was new to whiskey as well. I was like, oh, a big fancy box. That's what it's all about. Uh, £200 down the oh, sinker, God. really. I mean, I reckon I've, I don't really sell whiskey to make money. I mean, I sold the code, Glenlivet code and the Glenlivet, Glenlivet Cypher to try them in a pub in Edinburgh. And they were terrible. So I sold them and basically didn't make any money on it. I think I lost because of the commission. But I think I'll have to sell this and probably lose out money on it. Uh, because it's just... Whiskey matured in ice wine. It just, as soon as I heard that, no, 
I was no. new. I was new. I was naive. Ah, oh, no. You look, know, how, I have... look how fancy the box is. <laughs> it wasn't good. It, I mean, it's, it was okay. I tried, when we had Stevie's, it was a nice enough dram that you could sit, you could drink, but there was nothing... What is it? It's uh, 43% ABV. There was nothing mm. to nothing to really strike that kind of struck out or that stuck stuck with me. There's nothing I can remember about that whiskey other than it just being nice. Yeah, but it it would be that's the whole Glenfiddich thing, right? It's so quintessential space side. It doesn't really matter what sort of finish they use. It will always be easy going, not too impressive, really lovely, but yeah. nothing particular about it. Um, I mean, tried the Grand Cru at the f at a festival as well, and it was just. I just felt, as I said to the uh, ambassador who actually said, um, I wouldn't go into his name, but I said to the ambassador, I said, um, why, I, I, this is this is just all packaging, why bloody champagne? And he Even went, 40%, well, right? 40%, yeah. And he Ridiculous. went, well, he went, actually, it's not, um, it's not actually aimed for drinkers like you, it's more for the uh, foreign Asian market. And I was like, what? He was like, yeah. It's That's not really racist. Aimed. <laughs> it was like he's not really aimed for the whiskey geek and I was like well I don't really class myself as a geek I don't delve into things too much I just like whiskey I'm not like one to go into how barley affects different things I probably should but he was like it's not for the whiskey geek and I was like but surely you should be wanting to sell me that I know my mind might be made up already that it is garbage yeah. and a lot of money for garbage but surely you should still be saying oh well you should try it with this or, I don't know but he just basically said um, maybe he just had enough he just basically said, it's not for you, <laughs> it's for Asian people. That's what he said. Well, I have uh, a couple of FOMO bottles here as well. Of course, everybody knows this one. Just had to have the eight-year-old Oloroso Kilcarran. Oh, Sherry. Yeah. How, how is I, it? It's worth it, right? It's a yeah. wonderful dram. But it's not that special. It's just really good. Right. But to me, it, it was a... Uh, uh, an eye opener because I tried the uh, eight year old bourbon version and I yeah. hated that. I, I just couldn't get, uh, get to grips with it. But I love right. the 12 year old. Uh, but this is very lovely. I, I give it to uh, I let people try this who don't like uh, peaty whiskey. Peated whiskey, yeah. yeah. And who have no experience with sherry whiskey. And they all seem to love it. Uh, they have to water it down, of course, a little bit. Uh, but they, they love this. This is a gateway whiskey to trying more PD stuff. So say it was um, still in the primary market for the same value. Would you buy it again? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's good to know. I don't really remember what I paid for it. I think it was somewhere. It was 60. okay. I think 65, 66. 65 maybe? euro, yeah. yeah. That's pretty decent. Yeah, Mark says uh, Kilcairn 8 is sublime, one of the bottles I bought more than one off. I didn't even manage to get one. I've got a sample sitting, so I'm happy with that. But uh, I am gutted <laughs> that I didn't get a bottle. When I mean gutted... Oh, the, the whole thing with FOMO is there will always be another one, right? Yeah, there will it. always be another one. You sent um, me a sample of that uh, Springbank local barley 10-year-old. Well, <laughs> well, if there ever was a FOMO <laughs> bottle, it is the local <laughs> barley series, right? That's Jesus my last sample. <laughs> That's the last of the whiskey. Yeah, it's wonderful. Um, Mark, I would never buy that. No, it's it no, is lovely. It's the same. I don't know. You you might have seen the the review, but um, I tell everybody this now. But when I first bought it, uh, I was with my dad, and we bought it in Glasgow from the um, uh, Whis. Well, I can't remember what they're called now. Uh, the one that Roy and I always go to. I can't remember the name of the, the place now. The Good Spirits Company. And uh, we, my, me and my dad walked into the pot still. I got a whiskey. He got a Guinness. And there was guys sitting across from us enjoying some um, whiskey, and I just pop, popped it out, opened it up, and poured it for them, gave them a little uh, taste of it. And my dad was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, ah, it doesn't matter. He was like, you just paid whatever for that. I was like, ah, it's there to be shared. It needs to be shared out. Um, Mark, who I, I work with, is saying, wonder if FOMO is a big issue if you're an SW MWS member. Yeah, that's probably, yeah. I mean, I'm definitely not a member. Um, Mm. But it probably is. You probably get a lot of FOMO for people who are members trying to get a, a ha hand on some bottles. I think if you're a regular malt review reader, I think yeah. people get less and less enthusiastic about the outturns from the SMWS. Yeah, right? I mean, Stevie had one, uh, I think it was a Bladnock, and it was called Monster Madness or Monster Punch or something a couple of years ago. 
And I remember being this being one of my most favourite enjoyable whiskies. Um, wow. And then I've I've tried more SMWS bottles since then, like the old fashioned and things like that, and they're just absolutely they're all right. <laughs> There's nothing nothing to gloat about really. What distillery was that one that you really enjoyed? I'm pretty sure it was Bladnock. Um, ah. I can't remember what age it was, but it was so... Fr- oh, it was just honestly lovely, beautiful. Uh, Kresimir is asking, what is our Dutch friend smoking? It's a cigar. <laughs> San Pedro. It is uh, tobacco from Bahia in Brazil with a Cuban wrapper, for those who know their cigars. So it's basically uh, a hint of Cuban flavor with more fruity flavors and more coffee flavors from uh, from Brazil. It's lovely, great smoke, and really cheap. I think uh, you pay about four euros, so what is that, 350 pounds for a yeah. cigar? I need, yeah, I need to start getting into my cigars a little bit more. I usually smoke a uh, thinner ones sometimes just when I'm having a session. Uh, but I do enjoy a kind of a, a chunky. I always love a Cohiba, uh, Romeo Julieta. I love them, but I need to get cheaper ones like that. That sounds sounds nice. <laughs> um, Willie, I'd feel a lot better waking up to a tanned Kilkerran than a bottle of something really nice that I spent one fifty on. Tanning whiskey, regardless of cost, is an occupational hazard. There you go. Mm. Uh, Willie says SWS doesn't inspire FOMO in me. I think Willie is a, a member and he has been a member for quite a while in SMWS. Uh, do you want to give another bottle and then we can have the mystery malt and then we can go through a couple more oh. FOMO bottles? I have I mean, another real FOMO bottle for me, uh, but it's worth it, of course. It's the the third in a row of the reds that I bought. Uh, the the last one. And there was... Uh, in the Netherlands, I don't know how it is in Scotland, but uh, the the shopkeepers here, they have to buy a, a package. So right. if they want to get, let's say, two or three of these, they also That's have funny. to buy uh, 10 long row uh, regulars, uh, a couple of Campbelltown logs, uh, thing from, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, and, but they just can't, uh, they will sell them eventually, but the, the price... It becomes less attra- attractive to have these on your shelf as well. So yeah. my favorite shop had only one, and I just happened to walk in, not expecting to find it anymore, and it was just there. It didn't even have the price on it. I just right. grabbed it, and instantly went to. to so if you're not even uh, worried about the price anymore, and you're just grabbing it, well, that's yeah. FOMO right there. That's right? FOMO. And it turned out to be, I think I paid sixty-eight euros. So that was yeah. actually a good that's price. Good price. Well, I, uh, I I bought that at the Cadenhead in uh, Edinburgh, and I uh, walked in, and I've probably told this story before, you might not know, but I walked in, and I said, oh, I was gutted that I missed out on the uh, Ardbeg 26-year-old. At the yeah, place. yeah, that was great. Yeah. yeah. The Cadenhead, and he said, oh, we've, we've, <laughs> we've got one sitting here, but you'll need to buy it pretty much now and then. So I pretty much bought that now and then, and that was a, a FOMO, and uh, the Deanston that was the uh, 11-year-old matured in rum, that was FOMO, so I went in, I'd ordered, already ordered the 13 year old long row and I walked out with these two bloody um, other bottles that I didn't really need. <laughs> well, I've also bought this just recently, it's yeah, uh, the, 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 the cast strength edition and it's uh, the first time that it came to the continent uh, because usually they only send it, sell it at the distillery I believe and uh, some shops in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, but it never goes abroad, so you can right. basically never get it in the primary market. And now it was the first time. I think it was ninety-five euros, quite pricey. That's and I just, it's... I had to have it. <laughs> Again, what, FOMO, right? And do you regret it? I haven't opened it yet. Ah oh, well, time, time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah, that's the problem. I have a lot of FOMO bottles, but they're all still closed. Yeah, I've got must, a few of them. I'm, I'm mustering the courage for the, the eventual disappointment, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've got a few of them for sure. Uh, all right, I've got this um, mystery malt. This is my first time trying it. So it'll be your first time trying it. I've not got any tasting notes. I didn't want to take any tasting notes down. I wanted to go into it blind. So I've got no notes. All I've got is what it is. Very curious. 
Yeah, I'm quite, uh, I'm quite intrigued to see your thoughts. Clean glass. Yeah, I've just got two different ones. Um, people from Glasgow might know. So it is higher strength. If we can believe uh, Mr. McLean, there's a lot of bubbles. Yeah. Uh, oh. Let me just shake the uh, the bottle. <laughs> yeah, it's. I mean, I'd, yeah. I think the nose is hard. <laughs> I think there's a lot going on. Maybe too much. There's Matt away, just before he finds out what the mystery drama is. Good night, Matt. Slanger. Don't know. I don't know what's more important to you than this, but... <laughs> yeah, I think he's got a dog or kids or something, whether they matter or not. Yeah, the Springbank is definitely coming, becoming a lot harder to get. Uh, from the distillery, just because it's so well known for being, well, good. Mm. Wow, it's gone quickly. Mm. It's a weird finish, really uh, estery and faint, I'd say. Yeah, it doesn't last long, does it? As in the, the um, it almost seems to evaporate. I think there's a bit of a finish though, there's still quite a mid jump. It's, it's light. It's light, but uh... oh, Jesus! I've got nothing. No, it's hard. I want to say I'm um, on the nose. I want to say something like something dusty, like opening. It's going to sound so uh, <laughs> so pedantic, but opening like a an old book or something, quite dusty. You know, I'm know. reminded of uh, of a bourbon in some yeah. way. Yeah, I can get that. The nose, yeah. It's definitely not a bourbon, but I, I've had that uh, Colorado whiskey. Yep. That's actually a single malt. And it reminds me a little bit of that because the, uh, it's, it's also because of the short finish. It's well matured, but it's still mm. young, so the finish is short, not not too well developed, no, no. real no real complexity, but it is lovely. This is a really easy sipping malt. Yeah, it's something I could see myself getting through. I think that, I mean, I know, I know what it is, but uh, there's definitely I think there's a, a touch. I can taste peat. I think it's a little bit. Um, funky, but it's also really fruity. Like it's very, like you said, those esters. It's wow. Mm. Let me try a little drop of water. See if it opens up a bit. Hmm. Yeah, I'll give a little bit of water. I wouldn't say it needs it, but you never know what, what other flavors will come out. Have you got kids playing in the background? Well, um, I live in Amsterdam, in the yeah. city center. Uh, so the, the streets are our gardens, right? We don't ah, have right. a garden. Everybody is, uh, is outside barbecuing. Uh, ah, brilliant. We, we have a nice street with people that all love and know each other. Uh, it's good. Good they gather around. I'm surprised you can hear it that well. We close the windows just to be it's sure. Not, it's, it's just it's, it's not too loud. It's... So uh, yeah, Kresimir's asking what we're drinking at the moment. So we're trying to figure out what it is, Kresimir. This is a mystery malt for bar. I know roughly what it is, um, but yeah, it's a mystery malt. Uh, we think it's not very or bar says not very complex. It's um, it disappears in your mouth quite quick, which it does. Uh, I think it's a little bit funky, a little bit fruity, um, dusty, 
I think it's got a, a kind of old attic smell or a cellar smell or a, an old book smell, like dusty, basically. I hardly get any wood notes. No, it doesn't. Have, it yeah, doesn't no. have the the bitterness or anything. It's it's really fresh. This reminds me of a lowland whiskey. Yeah, I would go. I was going to say with the the esters and that it is it's got a low lowland characteristic with the fruitiness. The closest I the thing water. I can recall is the Glenkinchy uh, Distillery Edition. That oh, yeah. that's the, the thing it reminds me of. But I must say, my lowland frame is quite limited to a couple of Argentoshans, uh, the newest Vladnuk 10 year old and the Glenginchy Distillers Edition and that's about it but no it doesn't have the oiliness of a triple distilled whiskey I, I, I think. No. I'll need to uh, send you the Daft Mills at some point and let you try them see what you think of those lowlands. Uh... Well actually uh, I think Matthew sent me a sample of the uh, Hazelburn Oloroso 13 year old yeah, and that was a bit of a weak. Uh, the strength was higher, but uh, the the taste somehow was a bit weak. The palate. Yeah, but for it, me, I do recall that finish being much longer. So I, I don't think it's that Hazelburn. Unfortunately for me, Hazelburn's my uh, least favorite. I think uh, they done a ten year old uh, Runderlitz and Kilderkins or whatever it is. Yeah, a smaller cask, and it's beautiful. And I've got a bottle of that. But in That's general, lovely. for for me, Hazelburn's just the uh, the kind of ugly duckling of the Springbank family, other than Cameltown Lock. Um, but Hazelburn, with I don't know if it's the triple distillation, it's just too, um, yeah, too kind of uh, one dimensional, almost flat. I like and the I, regular ten year old and uh, the twelve as well, and uh, I think they also had an eight year old that was also right. good. I maybe need to try more. It's maybe just what I've tried. I think the 10's the one that I'm not too fond of. Um, before I reveal what this is, because we'll keep it, we'll keep it tense. We'll keep the suspense. Um, I've got three more uh, FOMO bottles that I'll show, and uh, one of them's the uh, the Long Row 21 year old. Uh, that was ah. FOMO, FOMO for sure. This needed to be bought. Uh, I've never had an old Springbank is this old. Uh, I've still not tried a Springbank 18, although I've got one sample in the cupboard. The oldest I've had of anything is Long Row 18, and I loved it. The 2016 one that I sent you, and I don't think you enjoyed it too much. Um, but it was because of the rum. The rum, Whereas yeah. You, you like the, the rum finish, and for me, the funny thing is, uh, you send me the, the regular Long Row peated yeah. uh, next to it, and I had yeah. them side by side. And I was blown away by the quality of the regular long row peated. What a fantastic yeah. dram for the price! It's incredible. Yeah, I used to I used to hate on it a little bit, but um, after actually I visited the distillery uh, and I tried it at the distillery, it, for some reason it changed my mind with it. Um, but yeah, the long row twenty one, two hundred pound, I think it was. It comes in a nice box, which isn't normal spring bank, and uh, I've seen a lot of bad reviews about it, which I'm a bit gutted. But it's it's not opened yet. It will get opened, um, but it's, I'm just waiting for a. It's long row. How bad could it be? Well, right? that's the thing for me. At long row, it can't be that bad. Uh, Mark said from a whiskey bond mystery dram. It's not Blair Atho with riot. Uh, a whiskey <laughs> Uh I can tell you, it's not Blair Atho. Um, it's not Blair at all. No. Uh, oh Jesus! Bad pun. <laughs> not Blair at all. No. Uh, another uh, FOMO is this uh, Dram Fool, uh, it's a 27 year old Bacallan and I do not regret it one bit, it was only £155 which is ludicrous for a 27 year old Bacallan. I'm not the biggest fan of Bacallan because of the, the kind of Mercedes effect, it's just you're buying it because of the badge. Um, mm -hmm. But Stevie opened his, you, the, we get a lot of FOMO off each other, if Stevie buys something I'll end up buying it or if he buys it. Uh, if I buy it, he'll end up buying it. But yeah, that, that, that's what I wanted to ask you. Who uh, who is your enabler? For I me, it's so. always been Ralphie. Yeah, I bought yeah, so many drafts because of Ralphie. I used to binge watch when I couldn't sleep. I, I have a little bit of insomnia, so I used to just listen to Ralphie on repeat uh, all through the first three hundred reviews or something. And then <laughs> the next day, I went online. 
So I, uh, the, the Letty 10 was probably uh, the, the original Letty 10. That was my first FOMO bottle, definitely. Oh my God. And that's and still, I'm buying Ralphie bottles that he, uh, I think you, you love this one as well. Oh uh, yeah, I love it. Absolutely yeah, love it. Well, Ralphie's fault. Um, <laughs> this one. Yeah, you saved the and they're absolutely fantastic, by the way. Yeah. And really cheap still. Nobody knows about them. Nobody buys them. Uh, you, need, you, need send me a, you need to send me a link to it because Edgardo is something I don't have in my distillery, but uh, in my collection. But I do need them because uh, I have tried a lot of them and they are good. Uh, uh, but yeah, Stevie's definitely a, an enabler in, in a sense. Uh, but it's good having that because one of us, ha one of us all open hours and the other might like keep it depending on how it is um, or just drink both then you've got two bottles to enjoy with each other uh, uh, I've got this FOMO uh, the Aaron uh, Cody Rote, um cask finish Whiskey uh, Trials where are you? Explain yeah. yourself it's shite uh, Mirko says Bart's my enabler and uh, Dad B. Dram says the unsheltered filter, fil uh, unshell filter collection, Edward Dower are smashing. I do need to try them and get them. And Mark Slinger says Aqua Vitae Roy is his enabler. Chris Amir says Ralphie Roy and Scotch for dummies. Ah, uh, Roy has let me down with the instant. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, well, I don't think it's that special. It's just run of the so, mill. Um, Willie says try the 12 year old. Edge of Dower Caledonian. I have tried it and it's actually superb. It's such a good yeah. jam. That has oh, that has that sour sweet combination. The, I have one of the ugliest whiskies ever, which I found for 60 euros, I think. Again, because of a Ralphie review. Yeah. I still haven't opened it because it's ridiculously uh, uh, there's a, it's it's worth a lot right now. Right. And of course, I'm not going to flip it, but yeah. I, I'm just working to a night where we've had too much and i'm just yeah. going to open it I'll, I'll grab it one sec yeah sure thing um so while he's away anyway i'll talk about this arm cody roti ah oh, you're there you're back in two seconds <laughs> uh edra dower fairy flag i've never seen that in my life <laughs> look at this 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 has been designed in paint probably oh my god it doesn't look that great does it no but apparently it has special significance for scott's Scottish people, Scotsmen. Yeah. Because of the legend. Yeah, Look yeah, at yeah. It. It's so ugly. It is and an ugly bottle. It was seven years bourbon cask and eight years Oloroso. And uh, so Ralphie says it's wonderful, but most people hate it. Oh, really? It's too much. So I'm really keen on trying it, of course. But it's. I think I, I bought it for 60 euros at a shop that didn't know at all what it was. They just yeah. had it. I think they discounted it with 20 euros. And then I, I saw it on, on Whiskey Base going for 200 or something. Jeez, oh. What? I think that's one of the um, benefits of living over somewhere European for sure. Is sometimes they don't always know which whiskies are worth what. Uh, I've had a uh, few that I bought. Uh, the question from uh, Krasimir. I had the Deanson 18. I bought it in uh, uh, Gibraltar. Uh, where you can buy duty free, and I that's the the Deanson that actually put me off a little bit. I thought it was really, but that was an older the older bottling, yeah, um, with the 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 brown label. Um, I don't know. I didn't really love it. Uh, it didn't really resonate with me. But uh, I did like the regular the new twelve year old. But it wasn't that great, and everybody was raving about it. I just didn't get that. It's maybe it's not my cup of tea. So Willie says if he's had a if he could have a fiver for every time he rocked back from the uh, pub and smashed into one of his expensive bottles, he now keeps decoy bottles in the front. Yeah, that's a good. I think mine's is when I've got people over. Um, especially, I mean, I, I bought every the, time, every I bought time. The, I bought the Lefroy twenty-seven year old. I knew fine well I was going to open it, um, but that was a good whack of money. And I remember first popping that, feeling like a complete baller. I was just like, yeah. I wanted to kind of shake it and try to spray it over people. But <laughs> um, another FOMO for me is that this this beautiful whiskey, uh, the Mortlach. Right. Which, like, is, it's, it's all sherry. 
um, which you said obviously I'm going away from, but it, when Sherry's done right, it's amazing. Uh, and this gives me faith back in Mortlack Distillate, but not obviously Mortlack, the distillery really. Uh, the no, whiskey's those, uh, those bottlings from Car Moore, uh, I, I don't think there's a bad one in there. I tried the Glen Talkers. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful stuff. And it's only eight years old or something. Yeah. Um, I've, I bought the Glen Elgin, 11 year old, but yeah, I think you're right. Uh, they are bringing out some fantastic, or have got a hold of some fantastic casks. Uh, but yeah, I think a lot of my collection, when I first begin, began collecting, um, and I kind of wanted Stevie here to talk about this because he had an issue almost with uh, Highland Park where uh, he bought a couple and then because they ended up being part of a series, he ended up feeling like he had to buy more of them. Um, and it'd be good to get his views on that. Uh, because he's he's had a, he's got a few that are in that sense, and it's the same with the Arons. Like once you get one, that's, you feel like you yeah. have to get them all. Yeah, that's a bit of the. It feels almost a bit like the 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 Apple guys, right? Once you have something from Apple, you need to have the laptop, you need to have the smartphone, you need to have the, the <laughs> headphones, you need to have everything. It's just. Yeah. I think the only. I I jumped a little bit on the Aaron bandwagon because I love the fourteen year old so much. And yeah. a, a couple of years back, you still had the 12 year old cast strengths. Those were amazing, really, yeah. really, really good. But they discontinued them. And then they, I think they have, uh, and then they started bringing out those special editions, which were very expensive. Mm. Uh, but at the same time, you have to give them credit for keeping their regular range at such a low price point. I think the, the new bottlings, the 10 year old, is fantastic. And it's only, I think, most of the time you can get it here for just above 30 euros, which is a yeah. steal. For me, uh, Aaron will always, I'm just pouring more of this Lady of the Glen because it's so nice. Um, for me, Aaron will definitely have a, a place on my shelf, but uh, the Cote Rote uh, is not going to be on there. Uh, no. But yeah, their core but range... Those finishes, they're just really youthful, and I, I've had a couple of those. Uh, I think I like the the dessert wine finish. What was it called? Uh, it was a gift from my wife. Um, I love that one. That was good. But they also have a port version, which isn't great. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Sauterne. Uh, no, not the Sauterne. No. Uh, no, I just don't remember. Right. An Italian but wine or something. This um, this mystery mall. Yeah. Uh, Fellas, I, I've got nothing. I, I think it, it has a. Uh, I would say it's. Uh, I'm got. It has some sort of a. Uh, it's not bourbon mature, of course. Um. <laughs> I'm sticking to the. I'm, I still get that American single mold, either lowland, light kind of style, not too old, but a good cask, a first pill cask of some sort. But right. Well, hard all what, oh, um, yeah, all I want to say with this is obviously I was giving you this um, out with the video because before this we weren't going to have drams together. It was just going to be Stevie and I, and we might have had like a little dram together. Uh, so I didn't want to make you feel um, that you're on the spot or anything with this. But this is actually my uh, infinity bottle. Um, wow! So it's it's got a little uh, IPA sticker on it, and it's a Springbank bottle. And this is um, I'll read out what's got in it. Uh, one might surprise you. It's 30ml of Springbank 15-year-old, 50ml of Springbank 10-year-old, 20ml of Glendronach Cast Strength, 50ml Glen Morangi Mill Sean, 100ml Dalmore Lucio, 30ml Glen Goyne 21, 50ml Blair Athol Old Malt Cask 23-year-old, 30ml Glen Dronach 18-year-old, 100ml Blair Athol Distillers Art 14-year-old, 30ml Glen Morangi or Morangi Signet, 50ml Kilkerrin 8-year-old, 50, uh, 35 Balvenie Portwood, 21 year old, 100 mil Tam Do, 15, and finally 20 mil Glen Farkless, 2007 Distillers Edition at 59.4%. Um, I don't know what the ABV of this is, it's probably around 48, 47% ish. Um, you, you've done a great job. <laughs> well, yeah, I hope it's. I hope you have enjoyed it. I gave it to Stevie Blind and he thoroughly enjoyed it as well. Um, but yeah, I've just been kind of adding to it and seen what I could do to balance it out in a sense. Um, now that you mention it, it, I do get the the 15 year old Springbank. Uh, now that you 
Yeah. I think this is the dominating. Uh, this one is dominating. It's funny you say that because that was actually the first whiskey in it, and it's actually the Springbank 15 bottle. Very cool. The thing with those Infinity uh, blends is, I had a couple of, at my house as well, and yep. there's always a problem with the finish. It just yeah. doesn't work. No, I don't know why that is. I don't know how they uh, manage that when they when they're making a blended malt, but. Every single Infinity bottle I have, the finish is short and it's disjointed. And I don't get it. So what I done, um, I think I was, yeah. So after I had the Glen Morangie Signet, I then added four other whiskies. And one of the whiskies was the Kilkerran eight-year-old uh, cast strength. And the reason I added that is because I thought that would aid with the finish. Um, I thought somehow that maybe the higher the ABV, the longer the finish would help. But yeah, you're right, the finish just seems to dissipate, go away. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with the outcome of it. I'm, I'm glad you're going to enjoy that. Um, and it's something else to drink. <laughs> I'll maybe now try and sell it. <laughs> no, but it's it, it's so quaffable. Mm. I suppose if you're, uh, if you're getting ready for a tasting and you need your palate a little bit uh, worked, mm. uh, this is perfect. Just let it swirl around your uh, your mouth a bit and you're ready I was wanting to do a, a, a kind of little series where I sent it to other YouTubers and they done like a kind of their own tasting notes on it um, blind to see what they thought uh, but I've kind of given up given up on that idea because I just think it'd be too much hassle on it um, yeah. I, don't, I don't think it'd be very worth it really but I'm glad uh, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it out in samples now and then to people and see what they think of it I think it's a really lovely combination. You know, I wonder, I dismissed I Roy's, uh, I dis I dismissed Roy's uh, ability to be uh, an influencer, <laughs> but I actually really went for the rum. I hope you can see it. Oh, yeah, yeah, the four square, yeah, yeah. The nobiliary, which was on uh, his Instagram. Yeah. And when, and when I walked into the shop, we actually did a rum tasting, and it was lovely, and I immediately bought it. And then the fact that somebody that you, you watch a lot, uh, or I, at least I used to watch a lot, yeah. uh, it's a sort of uh, uh, the, the feedback that makes you purchase it much more easier. Uh, even though it's, it's an expensive rum, I just had to have it. I figured out how much, well, how much was it? Uh, 80, 80 bucks. Yeah, because um, I bought this. I mean, I had tried it. Uh, at the Royal Mill Whiskey uh, about two years ago or something and I thought I'd actually this was almost a FOMO because I thought I'd missed out on purchasing it um, but it hadn't sold out or anything it's 56% ABV it's matured for 14 years um, and it comes from the Diamond Rum Distillery or Rum uh, Guanis Rum from Diamond Distillery uh, pot distilled and it's it was £80 or something but I really enjoy it uh, and it's probably the closest rum that I've ever tasted or experienced that's been almost like whiskey. Yeah, well, if you uh, since you're predisposed to long rum and Kentucky yeah. whiskeys, you should definitely buy Jamaican rum because it's right. it's the most funky stuff. Uh, yeah. It's dirty, uh, and you can't go wrong with uh, uh, what was it again? Bloody hell, I forgot the name. Ah, god damn it! If you remember. I'm Send me I'm having Instagram. A, I'm having a I'm having a stewy moment. Yeah, uh, you're this, having a lot of the, the, the sentimental uh, issue. <laughs> um, all I wanted to ask now was uh, just basically people in the chat if they've had any uh, issues with FOMO. Obviously, people have mentioned. Um, I know Cresimir was mentioned in the Glen Elk and uh, Karen Moore, and people have mentioned the wee beastie. But it'd be good to see if anybody else has had some um, FOMOs that have maybe they've regretted or FOMOs that they've really yeah. enjoyed. The worst disappointment. I would yeah. like to know. Yeah, that is the, honestly the Glenfiddich Twenty One. When I look, I, I really want to remove it from my shelf, but um, every time I look at it, I just think you're a you're a bugger. You're just sitting there taunting me. Um, <laughs> but my worst uh, FOMO bottle, I think, was 
the white walker <laughs> oh i never even no no I, I never that, even expected it to be good but i just i was a big fan of game of thrones and i thought oh. it was fun just to have a bottle and share it with friends yeah. and every time uh, a main character would get killed in the last yeah. two episodes we would all have to take a shot Ugh. but after the first one nobody wanted a shot anymore he said no no uh. anything else anything else please it's, it would have been good boring. to have it would have been good to have Stevie here because Stevie originally wanted me to go in with him on the Diageo Game of Thrones series set. He said, "Oh, we'll go half and half," oh. and I said, "I think I'll sit this one." No, out. they are cool looking bottles. But he ended up buying them all. The recent one was the Mortlack sixteen. He got two bottles, luckily enough, um, or unluckily enough, because I tried it and I wasn't a fan. It's a bit too expensive for what it was. But yeah, he's yeah. got the White Walker he's... one, and I think he's got the Fire one. Uh, Whiskey resource is saying. To answer the question, the English 11 year old is giving him FOMO, but he's channeling the force to resist. Uh, so for me, I don't think I'll get FOMO over English whiskey, just pure racism. <laughs> but Not I even mean, not even Bimber? I mean, there's been, I had the Bimber, I think it was the first release, it was really nice, the recharge one was okay, but it's... It, it still sounds like a sex toy to me, Bimber. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to a store near you. Bimber. Yeah. Um, so, Dad's be Dram, so many FOMO in the McAllen Estate. Yeah, I saw McAllen Estate uh, selling for about £200 retail, and then on the auction about a week later, it was going for 400 even though they had so much stock of this McAllen Estate. I right. couldn't understand why people were buying it for 400 and it flooded the market, uh, flooded the secretary market, and the prices just dipped, and those some of the shops are having to sell it under price. Uh, McAllen is so off-putting to me. Yeah, I think I had uh, McAllen, the the second one in those colored range. The not the first, not the gold. I think the amber is the second one. It was fine. Yeah, nothing I think the bad. Amber, yeah. But nothing the spectacular. The amber was one of those whiskies when I was first starting that I always kind of looked out for because I, I had tried it and I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, my dad always used to get gifted McAllen gold at his work, and they are good whiskey. There's, there's no denying that, or maybe they're, they're nice whiskeys. There's no denying they're nice. They're easy to drink. Yeah, they're nice. They're just not, not worth the price. You know what is, uh, my biggest, most recent FOMO. Uh, yeah. Ah, I kept it till the last. I just received the second one today. Sorry, I thought that said Dalmore, but I just realised what it said. <laughs> is that the Waterford? Yeah. Um, I was speaking One, to not to the two. <laughs> so because it's all about terror, right? So I had to have at least two because they're matured completely the same. They're the same age, but they're from a different farm. So mm. I bought them with our whiskey club, and mm -hmm. we're going to do. Uh, well, Mirko is in the chat. He uh, he knows it. now. He knows about it, but it's a bit of a surprise. Yeah, uh, we're we're going to follow uh, these two these two farms as they progress because this is version 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah. So each I think every year or every two years they'll bring out 1.2, 1.3. Ah. I just wanted to uh, basically adopt a distillery with the club yep. that we can actually follow from the very beginning. Yeah, that's pretty uh, cool. And, and these two were quite well uh, dispersed among Europe. I had to yep. get them from Germany and Belgium because in the Netherlands we don't have an importer yet. I see a business opportunity right there. Uh, so, but uh, the reviews are quite good. While well, it's only three years old, but yeah. uh, by having them both, uh, I can actually find out what the difference is between barley because one is from Wexford, somewhere a little bit right. more north, and right. one is uh, right down, uh, very close to Waterford, actually itself. So you can right. really see the difference if yeah, barley yeah. is that important. Yeah, I think uh, some of the English, uh, well, I think it's London uh, Whiskey Club, they're doing a similar thing with Bimber. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was speaking to Jason about this Waterford, because I've seen it on social media, and then I've seen it on the auction look, going for a crazy price. Look at this. It's fucking beautiful, right? This is... Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful bottle. It's just, I, I don't know anything about it. Like, I, I couldn't make a justified uh, purchase on it. I don't... I, I, I need to look it up. 
Um, I love like, it. I think uh, it's it's really novel. Yeah. Uh, but it will only be open probably in, in September or October, unfortunately. Mm. I might have a little bit for myself just to see if it's worth it for the tasting. You have to do your research, right? Exactly. But it's not uh, it's not um, alcoholic. This was definitely drinking. FOMO. This was definitely yeah. FOMO. You're you're not an alcoholic if you're doing it for research or exactly. Um, <laughs> you know the drill. Uh, Willie says Odbin single ale malt from 1966 or seven. A uh, stunner, and it had me running around the various stores stocking up so I didn't lose out. However, the the release uh, the following year wasn't so good. Um, so I wonder if you've if you still got any bottles of that left, Willie. Uh, Mirko says he's looking forward to it, so that's got him smiling. You should be, Mirko. You should be. Um, it's going to be fun. You know, President Mayor says it, it kind of looks like a bottle of wine. <laughs> since we're having FOMO whiskies anyway, or at least we're talking about it, I might. Uh, I'm going to try this <laughs> Springbank, and okay. I've got the the regular. Yeah, ten year old. 10 and I've also got uh, God God is really American right I also yeah, have I got it. I have the 15 year old so I'm going to pour a little bit of the 10 a little bit of the 15 all right and Let's the local barley did you see the the blind tasting uh, at uh, Captain 3d uh, uh, deep they, on film. yeah they did a, a lineup with all the local barleys I think and uh, a couple of random malts in between, yeah. and uh, they really downgraded uh, the local barley somehow. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, that was so painful. Um, well, he was asking what, what if he thinks. What do I think in regards to if he still has some of those bottles? I probably think you don't have any, Willie. Uh, you've probably drunk them all. Uh, Dad's wee dram says FOMO for Daft Mill and. Ah uh, right, Daft Mill. Yeah. Uh, well, that. That just um, kills me. It absolutely kills me with Daft Mill. Uh, the it's so close to you, right? It's yeah, it's, near. it's yeah. round the corner, and I've I've been and um, it would be so good if I could just go round and buy the bottles. But he doesn't have a license to sell, um, and I've been lucky getting the last couple of releases. But some like the Luvian single cask and things like that, I've missed out um, on purchasing just because other people have got them. And the thing and with FOMO, them. yeah, it's not necessarily a FOMO. It's more uh, a hatred to the flippers. I don't know what yeah, you call that. It's an investment. I yeah, think uh, it's, it's a shame Stewie left. Uh, Stewie, sorry, uh, Matthew left. Matthew, uh, yeah. Because he actually sent me uh, a little sample of the, uh, I think, the Luvian sherry dusk finish. And yeah, he yeah. also sent me the, uh, the bourbon version. Yeah. Uh, and that bourbon version, my God. Yeah, that, they are. That was... That was divine. I mean, I had the Luvians. I thought the uh, the nose was better than the palate. It gave me a sample as well. Um, but I really enjoyed the. Uh, I really enjoyed just the normal releases. I think one of them yeah. was the uh, the single cast release for the UK, and I tried it in uh, the pot still. And I've never said this about a whiskey, and it seems really sad about saying it. But when I drank it, it gave me goosebumps. Um, and I was drinking it, and I'm not even joking. It gave me goosebumps. I don't know if it was because of the hype of it, but. Um, once I started tasting it and I almost didn't want to finish what was in my glass, I was like, I really love this whiskey and I was sad that I couldn't get a bottle because of the ludicrous price. I think they're selling for like £1,200 or something. But I just remember thinking, this, like, honestly, it gave me such an immense feeling. Um, so Whiskey Resource, definitely Daft Mill, thanks to uh, Stuart, he's tried it now and it hasn't helped my FOMO for future releases. Um, FOMO but, for Mark was a teapot jam batch six. Yeah, the teapot jam right. was a, yeah. a solid Glen Goyne, uh, and the, the batch six is supposedly one of the, the, the be best ones. Or oh, is the batch six the most recent one actually? I think the, the best one I've had. Oh, seven. Batch three. Seven is the most recent, right? Is it? Yeah, I think so. Um, but, uh, I, I skipped on the the, the teapot drams. We don't get them here in the on the right. continent. Uh, it's easy for me to skip those. And what I actually did to combat my uh, my uh, FOMO purchasing habit is, uh, I think I, I paid uh, about five or six hundred euros to just fill my bar yeah. with daily drams. Oh, nice. So I, I bought uh, Bunnehaven 12, Springbank 10, Lafoulin 16, 
uh, long roll pitted, uh, I think the, the Amrut uh, Fusion, uh, and the uh, Avalar 12 non chill filtered. A couple, of, just those daily drinkers, yeah, they yeah, are yeah. instantly pleasing. Put uh, off the old floor and fauna. Uh, no, I finished that, uh, <laughs> but that's that's a little bit more pricey. These were all in the yeah, cheaper. 35 to 40 euro range. So I filled my my bar completely with daily drams. Uh, so every time I walk up to my bar and I, it's been a long day, a rough day at the office yeah, or yeah. something, or, uh, or my team lost again, right? Uh, it's Final. easy to just grab an an easy drinking dram like that and i really yeah. started re-appreciating just the the easy going um uh, drams that we tend to overlook right yeah was, at some point my bar i had 26 bottles open and all of them were quite expensive and uh not easy to get into you really yeah. had to sit down for it and you just don't know what to grab and no and i know the, what you're saying it's, it's what happens like then just to make the point, what happens then if you're not longer uh, sure about what to pick, you're so sensitive to buying a new one. Yeah. Whereas if you have a lot of lovely daily drinkers, the, that whole FOMO that kind of dissipates a little bit. Yeah. I really I, noticed a change in that. I see what you're saying. I think I've gotten a habit of that. I mean, a lot of my daily drinkers are in my barrel, but my selection on the whiskey shelf is the more expensive ones and it's the ones I see all the time so it's the ones I kind of want to go for but I've not yeah. even got a bottle of Springbank 10 or 15 in my collection which I should have because I enjoy yeah. it so much and it's Definitely. a drinker that I can just drink um, Whiskey Resource was saying about the uh, the Rechard I have tried it um, thanks for letting giving me the uh, opportunity to try it again but I, I will pass up on it it's good I don't think it's amazing but I have tried it thanks for the offer anyway um, I'll try and pronounce it the way you pronounce it Mirko um, batch seven, he's saying for the teapot dram, and he uh, has it. Dram is off. Thanks for popping in. Uh, Mark saying uh, another FOMO for him was the tomato PX, uh, same cast with yes. Scott Bat first yes. tried. And uh, Willie's saying uh, it's a good set of decoys that you've got yourself there, Bart. Yeah, yeah, all FOMO, all FOMO. But the ultimate FOMO here, I've never had a local barley. Uh, I think. Most of the shops in my vicinity, they only get one bottle or something. So it was completely impossible to obtain a bottle, uh, any of them. It's it's just impossible. So for me, it, it will be the secondary market. And then I just thought, well, fuck that. No, I'm never that. going to pay that. Uh, for the same, for half of the price of the original, uh, uh, what is it, RRP? Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Uh, you can get the... Uh, the Isla Barley from Brooklady, the 2007 or 2009 edition, lovely stuff. Uh, but now I'm just going to try it next. To, so this is the local barley 10 that you sent me, uh, the the 56.2 version mm. for everyone. 2019, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the 10 year old, and here's the 15. So oh. let's. Both bottled at 46%, and I think the uh, it's the 15 yep. bourbon and sherry, and I think the uh, 10 is just exclusively bourbon. Yep. Um, I think the 10 year old's bourbon, uh, the local barley, I think it's bourbon, sherry, and port. Uh, you need to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's the. Um, the nose used. on the 10 and the local barley is very, very, very much the same. Yeah. Wow. This is incredible. Uh, I, if I mix this. up these glasses, I won't know which is which. That's, That's how close it is. I do wish I had some of the local bar left. It was quite a, a favourable dram and I, I got through it quite quick. So just once you've uh, had a little sip, just pour it back into the glass and send me it back. I will, I will. I'll spit it out. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Extra mature. Yeah, that's it. Uh, Chris I think saying I start thanks. with a with a sip of the ten just to to get yeah. my bearings. Clean it a little bit. Uh, no problem, Chris Amir. No problem at all. That's what it's all about. Oh man, it's amazing. Such a great dram. Yeah, just a regular ten-year-old. It's just such a wonderful dram. 
See, I think my bias towards Springbank would probably put that over the Ardbeg 10, but even then, it's, it's a close competition between the two for... Definitely. Uh, the Ardbeg 10 is much more mellow. It's such a... a, a, a delicate... Almost, yeah. A delicate whiskey. The, yeah, I think the Springbank... Te I think Springbank, because of the funk, because of the... Uh, because of that, you, the sulfur maybe, it's a bit harder to get into. It's meatier. Yeah, meet you. Um, Willie's on to the uh, Blair Athol 11 year old, uh, first fill, ex bourbon, non chill, cast strength, uh, no colouring, sorry, non chill, filtered, and cast strength. Mm. Yeah, I'm on to the uh, Space Side Distillery, uh, so the one that do Dallas do, I can't remember what the distillery's called, I think it's just called Space Side Distillery. Uh, 23 year old. There's only 74 bottles of these, it's good with water, it's a lot better with water, but I think the sherry's too, too meaty. So something in between. What do you think of my uh, beer mat? Uh, I think that's probably the best beer mat I've ever seen in my life. It's for my whiskey club. For the whiskey we always club. design uh, beer mats. Well, I, I design beer mats to hand out. But we uh, changed our logo to a coronavirus <laughs> uh, theme with the mask. And, uh, and of course, the, in the O, there's a, a nice little uh, COVID-19 virus. Virus. Thing. I think you probably should have changed the mouse to a bat for the time being. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, yeah, I, at first when you showed me that, I thought it was toilet paper because I had a little bit of, uh, I w I'll try not to swear, a little bit of um, excrement on it. <laughs> but no, it was just well, Boris's face. <laughs> yeah. I better not say that, but you can't talk politics on here. No, you shouldn't. You don't know who you offend, right? No, exactly. Everybody's entitled to. You, YouTube might uh, might kick you out, right? You might get blocked. I might get blocked. I, I, I don't know anything about Boris's politics. I'll play dumb. Um, he's not the worst we've had. But yeah, uh, yeah, I like the beer mat. <laughs> good save, good save. So, so we made this. We made this one for a blind tasting. Ah, good old. Uh, Stevie Wonder. I was going to try and I was going to try and uh, come up with someone else, um, but then I thought you wouldn't get the humour. I, 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 I'm not very funny. Oh. Most people who are really funny always tell, always say that they're not funny. Oh, now it's it's getting different. Just needed it's to open up a bit, probably. Local barley. Yeah. It's, it's much more peaty, I'd say. Uh, um, I'll try to think what I found with it. I, I felt like um, it may have just been because it said local barley, but I felt like there was a lot of barley in it. <laughs> a lot of like kind of milled barley, total fine. Um, I, can't, I can't really remember what flavours. I, I need to look back in the YouTube video, but I, I remember it being probably tropical. I think there's a lot of pineapple. Uh, if I can oh. remember correctly, peach apricot. I remember it being quite fruity. I just, I loved it. Yeah, it's really dirty as well. Uh, it's one of those things that you always find in long row. It, um, it's it's a bit like the 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 bin bag. You know, the smell that comes up from from a bin bag. Uh, we looked. I think Matthew and I looked it up. It's it's some sort of a, a product that they make from oil. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So bin, yeah, bin bags are uh, the secondary. Uh, yeah. Com yeah and, and we looked up the exact, uh, well, the science behind it, how they make it, and how it's actually called uh, the stuff that that's the the foundational fabric for it. Yeah. And that's definitely a long row. Uh, tasting note. It should be so. I'm waiting for the moment that Ralphie reviews another long row because it, it, it would be definitely something that he says right next to Muscovado, it, <laughs> bin bags, bin bags. Yeah, it's it's probably not the most um, how would you say appealing. Uh, probably not the most helpful towards marketing to say it smells like bin bags. But yeah, I know what you mean. It's almost uh, not not kind of synthetic, but. Um, yeah, it's yeah. funk. It's it's just funky. Funkiness. Yeah, Hi hydrocarbon like almost in a sense. Um, Rotting fruit. Oh yeah, probably yeah, um, probably like latex gloves the way they smell sometimes. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what I want next. I mean, I've had four, 
I thought you were uh, looking for your cat. No, <laughs> he is. Uh, he's sleeping on the. We've got like a kind of futon type thing. He's sleeping on that. Is is this the first time that you haven't been disturbed by your dog or your cat? Or, or my girl, or my girlfriend. So my girlfriend's got the dog away to like a, a doggy play date, pretty much. Um, ah. And the cat's just the cat is sleeping. He he only usually disturbs me during the day. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have some of this. I'm on a little bit of a sherry spree, so it's the Mortlack uh, sherry dog's head. Lovely. So, what is your uh, your current favorite? It's a what? it's a difficult question, of course. But uh, out of the bottles that you have open at the moment, which is the uh, one that you uh, right, the would be inclined to replace? Uh, the one that I am probably leaning towards <laughs> uh, on a daily basis it is probably the green tea uh, from McMyra. And it's funny because I had the uh, Brooks Whiskey and I know some people didn't really enjoy it, but I found like it, it came a lot of banana in the end and it was just pure banana and I'm not a big fan of banana, but I absolutely loved it and it, it disappeared so quick. So yeah, the green tea is something that I'm drinking constantly at the moment. Um, when the, you have it again, look for, uh, 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 what was it again? A pears, pear drops. Oh yeah, pear drops. Yeah, all right. I think that's the their main tasting point. And what I like about McMara is that it's uh, almost exclusively European oak, mm. uh, Spence Spence oak even, and it's it's so spicy. Uh, yeah, I love that. It's, it's got a real. I think when I reviewed it, it's got a real difference from um, American oak or European oak in the sense that yeah, there's something really funky about Swedish oak. I think it was something to do with them. Um, they're navy boats, I was reading up. Uh, they, they had like so much forest for uh, building navy boats and obviously when boats became um, constructed, being constructed out of steel and stuff like that, or aluminium, whatever they're constructed from, they no longer needed these forestries. So people like McMyra and probably Ikea bought these things over and started using the wood from it. So I think that's where they got a lot of their wood from. Um, mm. But yeah, sorry, on to your, your, your question. The Lady of the Glen, the uh, Glen Elgin, is one that I'm, I'm always reaching for as well at the moment. And when it comes to peated whiskey, it's the Scarabus. Uh, it would have been my Porterskeg 10 year old because I loved it, but it's dead. But uh, the Scarabus from Hunter Lang, I think that's absolutely superb as well. It was it's only good. like £35 a bottle. Yeah, it's cheap here as well. Uh, I sort of passed on it because I thought, well, that, so that'll, that. Be around, that'll be around for, I don't know, long enough. Uh, well, I, well, I passed on it thinking I can't be that good. Like people, I seen it on social media, and I thought, oh, this is just a social media thing. People, have, it's a nice bottle, it's different, it's new. People are just posting about it for that. But then uh, I was in uh, Pit Lockery and I saw it, and I think they had it for thirty pound. And I was like, thirty pounds not a lot in a whiskey. I mean, even if I hate it, it probably someone will like it. And thirty pounds not a loss, really. Uh, no, it's, it's fantastic. Not. It's absolutely yeah. fantastic. Is it very peaty? It is really peaty. For me, it's almost on par, um, and I'm not sure if it's the same distilleries or casks, whatever used, but it's almost on par with the Portuguese 10, I feel. Um, but the age obviously isn't there. But I feel like it's probably the same distilleries. So it's, it's a good one to, uh, when, once you had quite a bit, it's a good one to run, round up the night with. Oh, yeah. Instead of, yeah. instead of opening an expensive... Uh, FOMO bottle. I tell you what, it's, once you've had a night where you've had a few beers, a couple of whiskeys, and you're feeling like, oh, I've probably got to bed now, I'm a little bit there, that is one to just top you off. That's one to have at the end of the night. Ah, it's a good one. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, the verdict yeah. this far yeah. is going to be the 15 is uh, a class apart. Mm. Bloody hell, what a fantastic dram. It really See, stands. Maybe it's a it's a combination of uh, of bourbon and sherry that appeals yeah. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but the nose on the local barley is is phenomenal. Yeah, um, for me, and it's probably just because the sherry as well. But I've always chosen the ten over the fifteen, um, even though it's younger and that. I, I prefer the ten. It's uh, for me a better whiskey, but. Um, yeah, I think the local barley for me was just another... I felt like it was better. Maybe because I paid more for it, but I felt like it was better. Um, yeah, you have to. 
Yeah, yeah. So you consciously, right? Yeah. But the, I think the thing is with the, the 10, it's much more consistent because they only have to monitor for 10 years. They can yeah. really keep an eye on it. And the 15, I think, is much more subject to batch variation. Yeah. It, yeah. It's a lower quantity. It depends on the quality of the sherry casks, of course. Yeah. The bourbon casks are much more stable. So that makes sense. Uh, maybe my bottle is, is just fantastic, but I've had it... Uh, <laughs> No, I've had it alongside a couple of special long rows as well. That I, Matt Matt is always sending me long row samples, mm. which is wonderful because I love long row, and all the stuff that you guys can get, I just can't. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm, that... I'm really, I'm really considering signing up for the the club. Yeah, you should. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's real value for money. Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, the price is off. Um, I mean, if I just get, I might you take my. Um, Headphones off. Uh, hold on. I mean, there we go. This is a, a long row from 2019. Uh, it's a 15 year old cast type fresh rum casks, which might not be your taste. Uh, but yeah, it's 15 year old, 52.4%, 911 bottles. And I'm pretty sure this was £80, maybe. Something like that. Uh, 15 years old, 80 pounds. Well, that's a good yeah. price. Cash uh, strength, of course. Cash strength, yeah. I'm sure it was 80 pound odd. Uh, Mature the note cast. I'd need to, I'd definitely need to speak to Matt because he was actually the one who bought it for me. Uh, and then I gave him I, I think he, uh, I think odd. he sent me a sample of that one and I rated yeah. it quite high. Yeah. Um, of all the samples he sent me, the one that I will never forget was uh, a long row, 16 year old. Chardonnay. Maturin, Chardonnay. Fuck. Oh, Absolutely. He gave me that blind, so um, yes, I, I had these blinds. If, if I had got to pick on one whiskey to drink uh, for the rest of my life, it would be that. <laughs> Fucking hell! Yeah, I, I gave me it blind, and I, I knew it was a spring bank. I said to him, um, "It's got to be long row or something like that." Uh, I said, "It's got to be wine." I didn't know what wine it was. I was like, "It's got to be wine." Um, I didn't know what age, and he said, "Long row sixteen and Chardonnay." And it used to be, I think it used to be. Uh, quite available to buy, um, quite accessible over here in the UK, and I'm all. I will always look for a bottle of that on the auction to see if I can get it at a good price because it is fantastic. The other ones you have to look for, I I think Matt bought one. Uh, I was his uh, enabler for a FOMO <laughs> bottle. Uh, the older fourteen year old, uh, right. with with the older label. Uh, I, I think like they're fine. very very sherry. Right. Oh Jesus, they're good. They're so good. I think they're uh, they're bottled in uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, something like right. that. Fuck. And they're uh, readily available still. No, nobody looks looks at those bottles. So. You need to send me. You need to send me a link so I remember. I will. I will. Yeah. Um, on the English theme, <laughs> I've ordered the Lakes Orange wine finish. That's part Scott, so that's okay, Stuart. There's nothing wrong with English whiskey. Uh, like I said, I did have the Bimbers first release, and it was, it was brilliant. It was it was a great whiskey. Uh, but the the recharge just wasn't that first ball. Uh, English whiskey. I'm getting a feeling time. that he's from uh, England. Uh, possibly. <laughs> I think he's. Uh, yeah, I think he's not kind of North England. He's almost. I think he's near the border, nearish. Uh, what fact? What does he wrong. think? Uh, whiskey resource. What do you think about uh, Cotswolds? See, I've, that's one I've never had. Um, what did I want to say? Oh yeah, I wanted to say out of my. Uh, out of my shelf, I've got 62 whiskey bottles on the shelf. 28 of them are bought under FOMO. Uh, the rest are either I've tasted or... Um, yeah, the rest are probably I've tasted. And 7 of the 28 bought out of FOMO are not worth it. So 7 out of 28, what's that, a quarter? Uh, no, yeah, quarter. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. So twenty five percent. So twenty five percent of my formal purchases are. Yeah, that's a third. Worth. So a third, third. is uh, it's not worth it. Yeah, it's a third. Yeah, I counted twenty one of right. my bottles, but um, I'm not really sure how it. Uh, but let's say in the last year, I think I bought. Well, twenty twenty is a bit of an odd whiskey buying year. I I, I spent more this half year. On which, yeah. uh, no, I spent more on those last three months than I did in the whole of 2019, yeah. as most of us have, right? Yeah. Uh, 
but I'm I'm letting go of FOMO a little bit, but the, of course the Waterford uh, bottles, uh, the Long Row Red is this year, yeah. uh, the Edredor uh, versions are this year, the Lafroic is this year, the Rum is this year. <laughs> Seriously, uh, FOMO is just a very integral part of, of our collections. There's I no way around it. I think probably being in the situation that we're all in at the moment as well, it's probably not helping. A lot more people are on social media uh, a lot more people are talking about what they're buying in that sense, got a lot more time in their hands, so that's probably promoting FOMO. Um, but it's definitely a, a part of the fun, really. Um, it is. I think, Hunt, I think hunting it, it down. Yeah. You know, I don't know, how many shops do you have, let's say, in a, in a 50 mile radius that you frequent? Uh, I mean, I've, what did you say, 50 mile or 15? No, let, let's say. Uh, well, if it's a really special bottle, you would drive 50 miles, right? It's, uh, yeah. I mean, I've got a few I've got a, I've got you a few most, shops. Most, most you will buy online. Yeah. Thanks. I mean, I, I've got like the Cane, the Cane Head in Edinburgh. Um, I've got the Good Good Spirits Company in Glasgow. Uh, I mean, there's, there's, there's an abundance of shop for me to buy alcohol. But yeah, you've got online. Mm. I think, yeah. I think it's, it's an integral part of the whiskey... Um, and at the end of the day, I think, I think you're always going to buy a whiskey, or maybe not. I mean, people might sample it before they buy, but I think you probably will buy a whiskey that you might end up being disappointed with. I think that's just a part of it, um, really. I, maybe part of the journey. Maybe once you get older and that, you'll learn not to spend money mm. on whiskeys. That I don't know. It's part of it, but I, I must say, the if you have trusted sources. And they yeah. point you into a direction, and that's a whole different kind of FOMO because those bottles might not even be hyped, but yeah. just because somebody uh, directs you toward it, you feel like, well, I must have it then. Uh, yeah. And to me, that that's always been Ralphie. That's uh, just. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've I've not watched much of Ralphie stuff recently, as I, I probably should have. I'm busy watching. Uh, busy watching other people. Um, not necessarily other better people. I mean, Ralphie's always been good, uh, but I just he's, he's got a lot of stuff to watch. I've got a lot of stuff to catch up on. And... Yeah, but you know, it's it's almost like uh, I watch YouTube all the time. I take my phone into the shower. Yeah. I put something, uh, some football documentary on. No, I was about to say, please don't uh, tell me you watch me in the shower. <laughs> well, well, I might have <laughs> <laughs> probably. No, you're making just, me blush. You're making me hot. <laughs> no, probably no. In the bath or something. I I take long baths. I, I spend five yeah, yeah, yeah. or six hours in the bath with a cigar, and my wife keeps bringing me delicious whiskeys and uh, lovely oh, yeah. snacks, and and eventually you end up at whiskey whims. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's the last. He's the last go-to. <laughs> no, after you've watched not, after you've watched Ralphie, after you've watched Roy, after you've watched New Dram Drinker. After you've watched uh, Vin, after you've watched blah, 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 blah. It's always whiskey whims at the bottom. <laughs> no, no. Actually, it's not quite true. Uh, the thing is uh, about your uh, presentation, it's so uh, natural. Yeah. Right? There's, there's no constantly talking about coins or shirts or all the fucking merchandise. And, and the, 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 I know I'm not making friends here, but I, no, I just no. can't stand the word community anymore and the generosity. It, I get it. I get it. It's very yeah. nice uh, if people sustain you in that matter and they help you uh, sustain your channel and uh, do better uh, videos. But I just like uh, some guy sitting at a table with a whiskey that he loves and that he wants to talk about. That's I think, yeah, I think for me, um, at this point in time with my job and that, I, I, I don't really need the income from YouTube, so I don't need to sell T-shirts or that. I mean, it's always been something I thought about in case people wanted them just for the sake of wanting them. I know what people are like. They do like these things. They do like merch. But, yeah, I, I don't try and... Ugh, I was that, I thought about coins and stuff, but, yeah, I'd just rather just talk about the whiskey really... Um, and like I said, it's not really an income I need in that sense, and it's not something I want to make a full-time job of either, because I feel like it, it does require a lot of effort, and there's a, other channels that are doing um, a lot of cool things, and they are putting a lot of effort in it, but 
I, Definitely. I, yeah. I don't, want, I don't want to put that I'm in effort in it. <laughs> I'm no, no, but the you, way it is. But you kind of do, and uh, the thing is, uh, there's a humbleness which yeah. you never uh, pronounce, but there's right. also that. Uh, God, I forgot the word. Oh <laughs> damn it! You, you're doing a, you're doing a me. I'm doing oh. my sentimental. Yeah. Oh shite. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> this the the self-deprecating part. That's actually quite right. funny. Right. You're always yeah. making fun of yourself, which is the best trait that uh, yeah. human beings can have. Don't take yourself so fucking seriously. No, I think uh, um, like I, I like to have banter and I like to uh, I like to rip into people now and then. But at the same time, I've always been in the um, the mindset, and and this is my work life, this is my personal life, this is um, whiskey. Like I've always been in the mindset that. I will make fun of pretty much anyone because I know that I can laugh at myself in that sense. Like I'm happy for yeah. people to laugh at me for anything. Like I am not bothered, um, and that's how I feel like it should be. Like if yeah. obviously it's, you don't pick on people if if they can't take it, they can't take it. But that's how it's, I feel. It's, I feel. it's, it's genuine. It's just yeah, genuine. If, if you can laugh and at yourself, I, why not? As you said, I get the uh, the other guys who really. Uh, so much stuff and it, it's almost become like a, a job for them yeah 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 oh well, you're breaking up a little bit yeah you were too <laughs> we're back we're back right we're back yeah no but uh, uh for a lot of those guys it, it feels like a job yeah and they they've lost a little bit of their uh their edge and their yeah, yeah, yeah. uh uh, their essence and yeah. uh, now they're just maintaining and sustaining and uh, yeah yeah, yeah I, see what I, I don't know I, I don't want to be hard on them but it's just the way I feel well that's the thing and, uh, that, that at the end of the day like um there's there's several people who watch my channel I won't say there's many there's several and uh, someone who I go to on a regular basis is probably yourself because I know how honest and uh, not critical but critical in the sense that it's um constructive so uh, I'll always uh, kind of rely on, on on your opinions in that sense because you can be you're, you're straight talking and that's what I like I like people who are straight talking there's no point in uh, dancing around the point anyway a few comments Willie says he's got 20 bottles on his shelf uh, 5 are unopened 15 are work in progress Whiskey Resource answered your question he says he's not had a Cots World yet um, Cresmier said me too but we've been talking so I can't I don't know what he's talking about me too he's been um, sexually harassed yeah <laughs> Uh, he's, uh, he's thought he's watched me in the shower. Um, Whiskey Resource is saying he's not too far from the border, about sixty mile. I thought so. Um, well, he said, "Disappointing whiskey usually comes good given the time." Uh, yeah, I could. Yeah, it, once yeah. you're drunk enough, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, you learn. You learn to live with it. Yeah. Uh, New Dram Dinker Anthony or uh, Nicky says, "Not fussed with Cotswold. I've tried to be honest, but haven't tried them all by any stretch." Yeah, um, it's not something I've had. Uh, Mark says yes, Bart, to one of your points. Um, <laughs> Mirko is saying time for a YouTube channel. Oh, no, yes, no, let's no. all rally together. <laughs> I knew um, that was coming, right? <laughs> Tony, I like it when Stevie is on, so Stu picks on him instead of us poor English. Uh, yeah, the thing with Stevie is um, obviously I've known Stevie such a long time. He's girlfriend. He's girlfriend. He's <laughs> his daughter is my girlfriend. Um, and I know that Stevie and I can have banter, and there's nothing taken and uh, and too harsh. I mean, we've been drunk many of the times. He's, he's many of the things to each other. Right? Yeah, ten, well, almost. Uh, there's no ring yet, but yeah, father-in-law. Uh, and oh, Willie says you're great. not wrong. He enjoys straight content. No, but how great is it that you can actually share a hobby with your father-in-law? Because there's always, of course, mothers-in-law. That's a whole different ballpark. Yeah. But well, well. You always connect. Such yeah. a nice uh, banter, uh, yeah. familiarity. It's like you're a lost son or something like that. Yeah. Imagine just being able to share whiskey. It's I think wow. it's, it's I'm so it's, jealous of that. It's definitely great. Um, and I think that the thing with Stevie as well, he's he's quite a, a serious person and he's a, a work life um, and he works hard. There's no no denying that, and he's done well for himself. Um, but personal life, he's very easy to get along with. He's not afraid to make fun of himself, really. And um, he, he's not afraid to sometimes say things that make him maybe look a bit silly. 
Um, there's been been things he said to me that have maybe been a bit inappropriate in front of family and stuff, but we have both laughed at it at the end of the day because our family are full families like that, and our full family get on. Uh, so my mum and dad, um, and him and his wife and that. So it's 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 good, and I am very lucky to be in the position that I am. Um, I mean, Stevie gave me a Glendronach 33 year old, which I will still acclaim as one of the best whiskies I've ever had. Um, so I mean, he definitely helped me, if not kick started my journey with whiskey. Um, and although his spending habits are a little bit different in the sense of what he buys and he doesn't like Springbank, I'll always go to him for advice and I know that he uh, he does know what he's talking about when it comes to whiskey, really. So I've just uh, made a blend of uh, local barley, 10-year-old and 15-year-old Springbank and yep. it is divine. Is it? <laughs> the, yep. the trio. I did a Ralphie. He did a Ralphie. Uh, Stevie actually done that a, a couple of nights ago. He'd done a, um, a Glenfiddich 12-year-old, Glenfiddich 15 and Glenfiddich 18. Uh, and it was a lot better than just them on their own. I'm going to finish off with this. Uh, we've been on for an hour and 40 minutes. To be honest, it doesn't feel like that. Um, no, but, it but I've never spoke to you. I know drink definitely helps. But I've never spoke to you face to face. We've never met each other in no. life. Um, but yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought you said fortunately there. I hope you said unfortunately. No, 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 no. Unfortunately, <laughs> let me stress that because you're a you're a fantastic guy. Oh. And, uh, it'll be good. Always... It'll be good. Be good if we can um, hopefully one day in the future meet up. But yeah, what I want to say is it's it's almost been like talking to. I know, like I said, the drink definitely helps, but it's almost been like talking to someone uh, I've known for a while anyway. So it's it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. But uh, I've had the same thing with Matthew, uh, and there's just something to you guys. Uh, to maybe it's a it's a Scotch trade. I don't know, uh, mm. but you guys are extremely hospitable, extremely generous as well, and you're just full of stories. Uh, there's always something to talk about. We could go on for hours probably. Yeah. The funny thing is, uh, I think the first half hour, it was a little bit. Uh, I could see the minutes go by, right? And yeah, now yeah. we're at one hour and, and three quarters. Yeah, yeah. What the hell happened? I think um I think people sometimes well, I'm not sure how people I, th I think I get this from the working in England, but I think uh, sometimes Scottish people seem a bit uh, harsh. But I, I feel like we couldn't be more uh, accommodating to people in a sense. Um, it used to be a, a little bit different ten twenty years ago uh, with with regards to uh, Rangers and Celtic things like that. But I mean, nowadays it's 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 a little different. I mean, Matt's a a Celtic fan, and back in the day we might have not talked because of things like that. But I feel like it's a, a lot better now, and we can have banter with each other with it. Um, and there's been a, several times I've met up with him for a drink before he's went to a Celtic game. And to be honest, I always say, "Oh, have a have a good time at the game and good luck." But yeah, it'd be good to get definitely get together with a drink. And um, like I said, it's we, like, have, it's like... we have the same thing here uh, with uh, Ajax, of course. Uh, I yeah. live in Amsterdam, so Ajax is the regional team. Uh, but I support Feyenoord. And mm. I, I run a lot, but there's no way I can put on a Feyenoord t-shirt and, uh, and go running through Amsterdam. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about wearing a Tottenham Hotspur shirt, uh, but I think that will get me a death sentence even more. Uh, I thought you Last year, thought, last Champions League season. Yeah, I thought um, you were going to say you bottled it. Huh? I, I thought you were going to say you were going to wear a Tottenham Hotspur uh, t-shirt, but you bottled it because they're good at bottling things. Ah, but, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, but uh, if I wear one of those uh, kits, I have to run really fast. And, uh, <laughs> no, yeah. but actually, the funny thing is there's a, there's a pub here in Amsterdam uh, where I regularly go to watch Feyenoord games. Yep. Uh, even though uh, most of the public is uh, supporting Ajax, and every of course we usually use uh, lose against Ajax, yeah. and, and they, they just pat me over the head, buy me a beer. Ah, uh, <laughs> better luck next time. They feel sorry. But the other yeah. way around, if we go to Rotterdam, where Feyenoord is from, yeah. uh, if you go there as an Ajax supporter, you'll probably be killed. Yeah. Yeah, it used to be like that in Glasgow and some places. It used to be um, you'd walk into a pub and they'd ask your second name. And if your second name alluded to being a Protestant or a Catholic, whatever part you were in, you'd, you'd get either asked to leave or you'd get like pretty much done in. Um, I, I think times are changing. 
Have you been raised, uh, Protestant? No, no, I've not been. No, nah, I've not really been raised um, either, to be honest. Um, I mean, I'm agnostic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've not been raised either. But uh, I think a lot of Catholics, in a sense, uh, would say if you went to like a, a, a non-denominational school, it's probably a Protestant school. But um, yeah, I don't know. What is that? I don't even know what that is. Is that a candle? <laughs> It's uh, what you. I was raised a Catholic. I'm not really religious, but I do like the whole symbolism. Yeah. This is actually the candle that you get when you're born, right? So basically, every step in life as a Catholic is a sacrament. Mm. So, um, and you're supposed to light this candle every time something special happens in your life. So apparently, my life isn't very special. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm kidding. Uh, only on very when uh, certain relatives, uh, yeah. when their anniversary comes up or the, the day of their death or something like that, you light it uh, just right. to commemorate uh, uh, our wedding day, for instance. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, Catholic, Catholicism is so full of symbolism yeah. that it's very easy to uh, keep a little bit of that without oh, yeah, actually yeah. believing. Without uh, actually believing. It's yeah, so for symbolism. For, without getting too much into uh, religion, but I, I think there's a lot to take away from it. Um, whether, whether you believe in it or not, it doesn't matter. I mean, um, at the end of the day, hopefully it makes you a, a better person. Um, but even That's people good. who even people who don't believe in it can still be good people from taking a little bit from it or not. Sure. Um, no, it's just interesting. It's it's uh, yeah, studying it's... human human behavior. I'll grab my uh, my favorite bottle. Um, yeah, Celtic, 1970. Yeah, I forgot Mark was there. <laughs> um, yeah, I <laughs> well, want a Ross County shirt. You know, you know why I want a Ross County shirt? They're the smallest team in uh, in Scotland. Yeah. And I have a thing for cold teams or the the smallest uh, venues, the tiniest our, team. Our uh, local County. team used to be uh, East Stirlingshire. Right. I don't know if you ever remember them. I don't think they are uh, around anymore. But they were. Uh, they I, they I only know Sterling from uh, uh, Braveheart, probably. Braveheart. Or, <laughs> yeah. I'll grab my uh, the bottle I have currently open. That is absolutely my favorite. Brilliant. Let me see. Yeah, this is a uh, beautiful. And it is a little bit of a FOMO bottle as well. Right. Ah, it's the 12-year-old. Uh, um, which uh, release is that? A special edition? Is that 2019? Yep, the latest. Ah. I have heard that that's the only one in the uh, the whole collection that's actually good. <laughs> no, no. I no. never had a bad one. No, but what I mean is, oh, what out the special releases, though? Oh, oh, you mean like no? The, yes. uh, I would say if there's one bottle that you would buy every year, yeah, buy the twelve year old Lyle Bullen. Yeah, because I have heard. I, I think I had the twelve year old Cash Strength one. Um, just the whatever release it is, at um, Pot Still, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. I've had the eight year old, really enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I, I was talking to someone. I think it was Posh Scotch, uh, Ian, uh, down in England, down in London, I believe. And he uh, went to the Diageo special release in 2019 and he tried them all. And he said uh, the Pit of Ake was like um, blending fodder, basically. He said it was, it was nothing. And the only the only decent one was a lag of villain. Uh, I think mm. he said one other one had some redeeming qualities, but the only one he'd buy was a lag of villain. Well, I kind of like Glenn Orr. Yep. Yeah. Um, Glenn Orr, and... I've got. Got that, uh, I also have a little bit of a sweet spot for Craig and Moore. Oh yeah, Craig and Moore, yeah. And that last one that uh, uh, it's all, it's always been a little bit peated, but you just don't pick up on it because it's only five ppm or something like that or seven maybe. Uh, oh, but uh, one of those special releases from last year, they were uh, it was quite peaty. It was lovely. Uh, I don't know if you've seen. You probably did see that kicking about. Five years old. Five year old Glen Ord. It's only forty six percent. It's very I light. Really when it's really spirity, I love it. 
the Glen Horde. It's, it, it's a lovely distillate. It's still, it's still, um, it's nice, it's good for summer. It's nothing to rave about, but I'll, I'll get a sample over it at some point. Um, it's decent. There's, there's no other way of saying it's amazing. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll hit the two hour mark, I suppose. That's probably a good time to cut off. Well, if you want to quit, I've got nowhere to go. <laughs> ah, we'll hit the. Um, I mean, we've got eight people watching. That's that's came down from. I think the highest we had was twenty, which isn't too bad. You do realize if you if you cut it up, you're you're basically only you're you're a, a bartender and you're telling eight people to go home. Yeah, I suppose that's right. I'll wait until the missus comes in from our uh, sausage dog party until I get told to come off. <laughs> I have the, the best of wives. She's just uh, watching something stupid on Netflix, probably. Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, behind me, you can see the, the, the Japanese uh, screen thingy. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, cool. And back there is uh, the bedroom, but uh, there's also a lot of windows there. So right. it was just to keep the, the light out a little bit. Uh, to be honest, yeah, my, my girlfriend is very... Back there all the time. <laughs> My girlfriend's very accommodating. She's very accommodating to the whiskey thing. I mean, I've got a full shelf in the like dining room, um, and it's open plan, so it takes up a lot of the the uh, the, the wall. Um, and she's been to Isla with us, tried some whiskeys, tries to get in. Uh, doesn't mind some whiskeys, prefers the fruitier space sides. Um, but sometimes at lives, I think she feels like I'm taking over the house because we're all open plan. So unless I do it upstairs, which is a little bit warm. Um, I'm kind of dominating the full living room or the full so downstairs. Where living where room. are you in the house right now? So this is the uh, this is the dining room. <laughs> this is the dining room. Um, so you got like the living room there. It's all open plan. Uh, ah right. Usually she goes through the conservatory. You got the conservatory there, <laughs> and then the kitchen. So it's all pretty much ah. open plan. Uh, so if I'm down here, I'm pretty much dominating the downstairs. Oh. It's, um, it's so fun to see because I, I've always figured this was a separate room or something. Uh, yeah, so so Stevie, lucky, he, he's got a, a bigger house and he has a he has a separate room. He has an actual whiskey room. It's lovely. Um, I it. or, yeah, it's really nice um, how he's done it up. Um, whiskey resource. Seen the car scarabus on offer a few times. Worth getting in. I would Probably. recommend it. I need to do a review on it. Um, I think it's worth it, especially at 35, 30 pound. I wouldn't pay, I think the highest I'd probably go is 50. I wouldn't pay any more than that. I don't think it would go more than that. Uh, Karen Moore had a good Glen Orb last year from Willie. And Tony saying, fill and depot on at nine if you need somewhere to go. <laughs> All right. And then after that, it's Roy, right? Yeah. I have one more, uh, one more bottle to show you. Yeah. This is actually influenced by Matt. Uh, let me see if I can get Hard it. Ardmore, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ardmore. Uh, it's uh, bottled in 2012, so it's quite an older uh, bottling in terms of it, it's been quite a few years. Yep. This is the cast number. Uh, yeah, 900445. <laughs> yeah. You've got it. But 665. But uh, the thing was. This was available on a Dutch website, which is notoriously low priced. It's called Van Zuilen. I'll send you a link sometimes because their shipping is inexpensive as well. Mm. And uh, they found this somewhere in their uh, uh, in their warehouse or what do you call it, in their shed. And yeah. they put it online and apparently they only had one bottle left. And oh, really? Matthew, uh, he uh, pointed it out to me. He said that Ardmore looks really interesting because we both have uh, a bit of a fondness for Ardmore. For Ardmore. Because Ardmore, it's a bit like how Colila is the poor man's uh, Lagavulin. Yeah. Ardmore is, is basically one of those overlooked, lovely, peaty, dirty uh, Highland whiskeys. And more people should definitely try Ardmore because it's just great, especially yeah. in, in indie bottling. Uh, but it's a different kind of tea because it's above sea level and it's it's more made of out of uh, minerals uh, right. and metal instead rather of rather than uh, wood kind of yeah so yeah. very different from Isla Pete but really delicious 
but uh, so we both ordered it at the same time. Yeah. And they sent one to me, and he was working uh, offshore. Yeah. And he didn't check his email, and they sent him an email. Uh, sorry, dude, we don't have any left. <laughs> and he was he was the guy pointing it out to me. I'm going to order this. Uh, maybe you should get one too. I got <laughs> one. You did it. So you stole his whiskey. I feel indefinitely sorry. Uh, I suppose it's um, I suppose it's good to see them um, favouring uh, more local personnel <laughs> than well, foreigners. Then. Uh, I think my order just came in a little bit before his. Because right. he was actually the, the the charming guy he is. He was actually browsing for something to buy for his wife as well. Mm. So he took a little bit more time. And That's I what just, happens sometimes yeah. when you buy an expensive whiskey or whatever. You have to buy something for the 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 wife. Yes, or missus. exactly. Don't be romantic when it comes to whiskey. Um, I'll let you repeat that, and once you send that on to me, anyway, I'll send it on to Mark. But uh, I'll, I'll try to. I'll try to put it in the comments. All right. But yeah, if you send me that anyway, I can forward it on to him. I've got a FOMO here. Uh, a FOMO from Stevie, who was the uh, enabler. However, I tried it with Stevie, and uh, I absolutely loved it. And I managed to get it cheaper than Stevie. Uh, he paid 125 or £130 for it. I paid £99, including delivery. And I think it was a steal... It's got a fancy box in that, but it's still such a, a really nice whiskey. Um, it's the Weems Malt, the uh, the Velvet Fig, and honestly, this is um, it's spectacular. Uh, I couldn't believe how good it was. I thought it was just going to be a bit, maybe just all packaging. Uh, but Sherry Casks from Speyside Highlands and Unpeated Isla Malts, and it's uh, it's well blended. Good nice. whiskey. For £99 for a 25 year old, I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> oh. So what do you do with your uh, your finished bottles? Do you all throw them out? Because I use them as uh, uh, on a bookshelf to keep all the books together. Oh really, that's quite cool. Um, I've got a couple bottles that have like fairy lights in them, they've got like a little cork and the lights in them. Uh, I've cut some bottles so that I can keep corks in them. Uh, a lag, uh, not a scapa, a skirin. Cut that in half so I've got corks in it. Um, but the majority of them go to the recycling glass. Mm. Uh, but the boxes I've got in my garage, so all the boxes of all the whiskies I've had uh, since I thought of that idea are in my garage and they're stacked up against the wall. So I can cool. just walk in and see what I've had. Yeah, that's great. You have the space. I live in a, a 52 square meter house in Amsterdam. So right. we, we, we call it the post dam. Uh, so uh, just like you, uh, much of the house is completely engulfed in whiskey or whiskey paraphernalia or leftovers. Yeah. Uh, the funny thing is, we uh, we host the the whiskey club nights here as well. Oh, is that where you host it? You actually host it in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. Usually, it's completely packed with uh, when there's twelve or thirty people in, and, but that's great. It feels yeah, like yeah, a student yeah. student party, it's, right? Yeah, it's more uh, communal, uh, cozy, and um, yeah, intimate almost. Definitely, yeah. Um, I well, there's a lot of whiskey. Uh, gimmicks or par paraphernalia as you said round the house but at the same time we bought a sausage dog we got a sausage dog a, a year or so ago um, and you should see the amount of sausage dog branded things uh, cookie cutters um, scarves uh, oh, God. bloody um, <laughs> what do you call it throws so covers and um, soft throws uh, just everything sausage dog socks there's there's a lot of sausage dog stuff here as well so it's kind of um, to and throw. So, not to put you on the spot, but would you say, uh, since we're talking about FOMO, right? To round, to round things off, shouldn't we open a, a FOMO bottle? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. 
Just something, uh, doesn't matter what, but something that we definitely bought uh, in, in a FOMO mood, FOMO motivation, just right. to, uh, to round it off. And maybe uh, the people still watching, they can do yeah. the same. Just uh, make it a community thing. I'll tell you what, I'll, um, I'll give the choice out to, there's only 10 people watching. 10's still a good number. It's like being at a pub. We're in our own corner of the pub. This is what Stevie always says. He says, Lovely. even if we can create a pub atmosphere, it's fine. So we're Perfect. in the pub. Um, the fire's roaring. We're all having cigars. <laughs> um, I'll give you the options and you can decide. 10 people yeah, can decide. Yeah, I'll do the so, same. I'll, I'll grab a few. I have a, a 20 year old independent bottling of Craig and Moore. Ooh. Which I've been dying to open. Right. Yeah. But maybe it's a bit light next to the uh, the, the spring bag I've just had. Um, I've also got the new uh, Long Row Red, of course. Uh, yeah. the, the new Lafroy Cast Strength might be a very good option. Yep. Uh, hang on. So. Toro, you're in for a treat, uh, <laughs> if, if you think it's a treat. Basically, our Roy Evans, Malts of Scotland, we are on our way out in the sense, we're exiting the, the pub, we're all in the corner and we're going to open a, a FOMO bottle, a bottle that we bought on the fear of missing out and we're going to open it. You guys just decide, we'll give you a couple bottles and you decide which ones we open, basically. I've also got these... Heavily sherry, Edredor. Edredor, yep. Let's see. Hold on. <laughs> Any is fine with me. Oh. <laughs> this is this is not like a um, this is not like an aqua vitae live fumbling about and <laughs> no um, why right no exactly right so what i've got guys and the uh who's watching 10 people um for my 10 people um it's the open day 2019 15 year old kilkerran bourbon wood Ooh. uh which i fear of missing out i got um matt uh multi haggis muncher to get me whilst he was at the festival. We've got uh, an unopened long row red 11 year old Pinot Noir. Um, I think if Cresimir's still here, I think he had it, someone had it. And then we've got the um, Deanston 11 year old fully matured in rum uh, for Ooh. the full 11 year olds, Caden Head. Um, so our whiskey bonds, everybody so far for you, we've got uh, Crag and Moore. <laughs> Yeah, of, uh, long row 13. I also the still have this one. I almost forget about it, but I bought this on a hunch. Uh, yeah. Because, but I just don't know how to pronounce it. It's the most peaty version from uh, Loch Lomond. Oh, Loch Lomond, yeah, all right. Loch Crofton Jar? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. I can't see the spelling. Croft, Croftensha? Uh, maybe. Croftensha. You, you should be able to read it. Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah, Croftenja, I think, or Croftenja. Yeah. yeah. Also, a FOMO bottle. So, Anything. what? What are your? Th oh, anyone. So, right. So, <laughs> uh, Kresimir says Crag and Moore for you. Uh, Mirko says Lefroig. Willie says Edred Dowers. Bloody Roy's, hell! Yeah, Roy says. Man. Roy says the Laffey cask, so that's winning so far. Um, yep. Mark Whiskey Bond says Edge of Dower and Kilkerran 15, so that's two for Edge of Dower, two for Lefroy, one for Kilkerran, uh, two for Kilkerran, so two's winning. Mirko says Long Row Red, I think that's for myself, because <laughs> uh, he's already given your votes. Roy says Agree with Long Row Red. So that's two for uh, my long row red and two for the um, Kilkerran. Although Tony's came in with the three for Kilkerran. Toro says uh, Croft Angel. 
Work of the Angel is a, a good dram. <laughs> and Kresimir says, open all. <laughs> oh, geez. So I okay. think for winning, no. winning for me is the um, Kilkerran. And I think winning yeah. for you is the Edra Dower yeah, just it, takes it. Was well, either Edra Dower or Laffey. Oh, oh! I'm trying to see what what comes in. Uh, got one for the edge of the door, two for the edge of the door. Yeah, I think it's two for edge of the door, and two for the Laffey uh, Lafroy cast strength. Well, then it's your call, Stewie. Oh. Um, or the, no, it, the Kragenmore also had two votes, right? No, I think I think the Kragenmore's only got one. Uh, we've got one from Kresimir with Kragamort. Uh, Roy Evans said Malts of Scotland, so I'm not sure. That's uh, that's a Kragamort. Oh, is it? No. Ah, so it's so it's two for the uh, two for Kragamort, two for Edrow, and two for Lefroy. Um. Oh wait, Tony Evans says uh, Lefroy, <laughs> and Willie says Edrow. So we've got three for Edrow and three for Lefroy and two for Kragamort. Uh, Sherry Bomb and Pete Bomb. Let's go with something different. So I don't know what that means. I think that might be the uh, Crofenga, possibly, from Welsh Toro. Oh! Whiskey Resources saying uh, Lefroig. So Lefroig is winning so far. Ball. And uh, wow. Kresimir saying Hattrick, Whiskey Wins. I can't open them all <laughs> in one night, surely. Well... Mirko, of course, he lives uh, only a city away from me, and he knows any anything I open now, he gets a taste soon. So, <laughs> so he's wanting the Lefroig. It looks like to me, um, it looks like the Lefroig cast strength won. I mean, my vote would be the Edge of Dower, but I won't throw that in there. Lefroig looks like it's won. No, that's fair. You you get a vote as well. <laughs> Go go for the Lefroy. Go for the Lefroy. The, the the public have demanded the Lefroy. Yes. We're Democrats. Yes, exactly. And I am gonna open the uh open the Kilkerran Bourbon Wood. I love this. Thank you for uh for uh uh fuck. Uh, are you trying to you for... try take the uh pee out of me? Oh no. No, thank you for humoring me. Humoring? Ah, oh, no, yeah, don't yeah. don't worry. See, the thing is, when I do it, um, it's not understandable because I am my English is my first language. But when you do it, it's fine because it's your second language. Whereas well, I do actually, it, I just look like a complete stupid idiot. The, the thing is, I just don't get to practice, right? Yeah. Everybody's in Dutch, and so I only get my English from TV series. That's right. that's about it. Well, for me, your, your English is pretty like spot on, to be honest. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, but I would really like, because I'm very sensitive to uh, accents, I would yeah. really like to just spend, uh, I don't know, four weeks or something like that in Scotland and just drive about the place, talk to a lot, a lot of people, and I'm sure I'd pick up on uh, a little bit more of uh, a natural English yeah. accent. A little bit less. American English. Have you spoke much to um, uh, Matt across uh, audio? Because sometimes yeah, yeah. when sometimes when he's speaking to me, he's he's obviously from like the Aberdeen area, Fraserburgh. Uh, sometimes he uses words that we don't really use. Um, but he, he might he might uh, slow down his, his accent and try and pronunciate a bit more, well, like I do. Actually, uh, your accent is easier to understand. Often. With Matt, we exchange those voice notes, and sometimes yeah, we have yeah. a, a WhatsApp call. And I really have to pay attention. And yeah. it, it's not—it's not down to his uh, his his English, but it's just—it's uh, yeah, so hard if you're not used to a certain pronunciation. It's so hard to really understand someone. Mark's uh, Mark of Whiskey Bonds hit the nail on the head, and I was going to uh, mention it. The further north you get. Uh, with Scotland, we call we call them uh, chupters. Um and it's basically well the way I'd explain a chupter is someone who maybe like sheep, uh, who, who's maybe fond of sheep, who maybe has a, a little bit of um, a little bit of a, a 
a sing song to their accent in a sense. Um, and they've almost got their own language. It's almost Shetland. Uh, Aberdonians have it. But yeah, so Whiskey Bond saying um, Bart's English is better than his. Uh, I, I'd probably agree with that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Mark's from What the hell is uh, uh, So that's what a chukter is. A chukter is like someone who's from the Highlands, someone who likes, uh, someone who's fond right. of sheep. Um, and I, when I mean fond of sheep, I mean fond of sheep. Uh, usually Shetlanders, Aberdonian, Inverness, they're, they're chukters. Uh, they're, they're Scottish is quite... Um, <laughs> they're, instead of saying everybody, they would say obody. Uh, obody here, obody or gamori here, and stuff like that. Um, aye. Anyway, but he also uh, has that uh, that seafaring rough. Yeah, dude. I think that's what it is. That that's kind of trick today. Uh, aye, so trick to say Ken a lot uh, is what he's saying. But I feel like Glaswegian's quite a Ken thing as well. I don't know if you know what oh, Ken is. So Ken this is the, the no. tenth. I think this is the tenth edition. I yeah. hate that they dropped the red uh, band. Right, all the car strings used to have that red little band. Yeah. Now it's it's green. Green. Why? But it's 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 sixty point one. That's a lot. Uh, it's a good um, one. Kresimir had two Scotsmen as roommates in the US. Uh, they had to slow down the way they talk so I could understand them. Uh, like I said, I work with um, English people, and there's another guy I work with who we went to college at the same time. We went through the same apprenticeship, and when we start talking normally, English people can't understand us when we're talking like quite fast. Really. Um, no, it's, it's it's quite amazing uh, the way you speak, and everybody's like, "Oh yeah, I understand that." And then if you sl uh, if you start speaking normally to my, my friend um, and just a little bit quieter, maybe you don't want to be heard. You can almost it's almost like you're speaking a foreign language sometimes to English people. <laughs> it's almost like speaking behind their back without them knowing because they they don't understand what you're saying. Uh, um, it's really funny if you just uh, first listen and yeah. then at first. Uh, Maybe you get a little bit lost in the sentence, but then your brain starts working. Yeah. And uh, while you've got question marks popping up, you suddenly understand what the other person is saying. It's, it's really funny how it works. I've been to a, well, lot, a lot of places in England, for instance, to Wales, to Cornwall, and they have really distinct accents. Uh, uh, of course, not, for joining. The, not uh, the Welsh uh, language. Oh, sorry, yeah, with the resource. I'll Thanks open this before it. before he leaves. I'll open. Oh, there we go. Ah, oh, it's so nice. Thank so you, fun. whiskey resource. Yeah. Um. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. Oh. I think. This I think smells well, like my cigar. It smells like your cigar. Uh, I think as well when you learn another language, um, possibly. Like I was learning German for a little bit, um, and then yeah. I went over to um, uh, Amsterdam. I can't remember when it was. I've, 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 I've went out the way of stop learning German. I should really pick it up again because I think it's a great language, and it's quite similar to the way of Scots speak with uh, Loch and all those kind of things. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but when you pick up one language, it's a lot easier to pick up in another language, especially when it's... Um, uh, if you're comparing German and Dutch or even German and French because of the, the feminine, the masculine things um, but I think English is supposedly one of the hardest languages to learn or at least because we've got a lot of idioms we use a lot of idioms, we use a lot of maybe not sarcasm but just uh, double entendres and things like that, I, I, I don't know but you'd, you'd probably be better uh, to comment it, on that It's actually your small talk your proponents to yeah. small talk uh, we're not used to that uh, to using that much small talk so it's just making conversation which is right. really a, a British art basically right uh, uh, I suppose because um uh, I don't know if it's the Dutch that are renowned for renowned for it it might be the Dutch because I know Stevie Stevie actually works over in a he used to have a flat in Breda um, and we ah, visit right. a lot uh, he, he has a the company he kind of manages franchises is a uh, Dolby Vivo they're anyway, they're an oxygen distribution company, and um, he was over in Breda for a while before obviously all the COVID. Um, and I'm not sure if it's the Dutch that he said about it or if it was the Italians, but there's almost a not an arrogance but an ignorance. But it's not the way that they're meaning to be ignorant, it's just that we all have this, like you said, the small talk, and we're always kind of trying to chat to everybody almost. 
the Dutch are know-it-all people, right. definitely. And uh, you can easily misconstrue it as arrogant. Yes. But it's just, um, we don't have a very uh, pronounced culture. So right. we tend to leech on other cultures. That's basically the, the whole of Amsterdam, for instance, is based on uh, Portuguese Jews, Jews from Morocco, yeah. uh, Spanish seafarers. Uh, but even the English, uh, there's there's hardly a moment here in Amsterdam where you, even when you go to bars in the city center, most people will speak better English than Dutch. Uh, right. Dutch is um, just not required. Sorry, just quickly, um, for uh, Kresimir, so the uh, mystery dram was an old Springbank bottle, which is now my infinity bottle, and I'll try and run through it as quick as I can. It's 30ml of Springbank 15, 50ml of Springbank 10, 20ml of Glendronic Cast Strength Batch 5, 50ml of Glenmorangie Melchon, 100ml of Dalmore Lucio, 30ml of Glengoyne 21 year old, 50ml of Blair Athol Old Malt Cask 23 year old, 30ml of Glendronic 18 year old, 100ml of Blair Athol Distillers Art 14 year old, 30ml of Glenmorangie Signet, 50ml of Kilkerran, Kilkerran 8 year old Cast Strength, uh, 35ml of Balvenie Portwood 21 year old, 100ml of Tamdu 15 year old, and 20ml of Glen Farquhar's 2007 Distillers Edition. Uh, <laughs> Willie is saying once you get into the Scots, the Dutch isn't so far off. They're much closer to the Dutch than English. Um, yeah, I'd probably agree with that. And uh, Mirko is saying the G or sh sound in Scottish is almost Dutch. So I wonder Definitely. if it means kind of loch or um, yeah. yeah. I suppose it's more like that's more of almost Gaelic or Gaelic. No, it's um, true. We have uh, many places in the Netherlands are have the last name of Drecht, right? Which is so close to a Drecht or yeah, yeah, a Loch. Uh, Loch it's yeah. really close. Yeah. If we, no, it's yeah. actually right. But I think uh, most of the 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 current English language. Uh, I just watched a very interesting YouTube. How far back, if you go uh, right. go back in history, how far back can you actually understand English as a native right. English speaker? And you're you're already gone in the Tudor time. Uh, there, there's no way you can uh, grasp what they were saying. Uh, but the basis of the, the current English language has a strong relation to the, the invasion of the Anglo-Saxons, or the, the Saxons, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and and that, uh, that, that is a Germanic language. So there's a great yeah, yeah. familiarity between our languages, uh, definitely. Whereas French, Italian, uh, they always say here, if, if, you, if you've had Latin in school and you've learned French, you, you can basically speak Spanish and Italian as well because they're so related. They're so yeah. close together. And I think it's the same with uh, Germanic languages, maybe even Danish and, yep. and English. Uh, hey, I see an animal. <laughs> I always yeah. say never, never trust people without pets. He's made an appearance. <laughs> Cheers to cats. Yeah. Have cats, not children. <laughs> Yeah, have uh, have pets, not children. Yeah, he's oh, look, fucking hell. He just he almost oh, I just swore big time. He almost knocked a whiskey bottle over, full whiskey bottle. He's uh, he was prodding at it. Right, come on, you're you're knocking things over. Come on. <laughs> I remember I, I I I was actually watching a video of yours the other day. I'm trying to think which one it was. I don't know if it was. I think maybe in the red hot chili peppers one. And um, I think your cat was uh, making a couple of noises. Oh, one one of the silly songs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you, <laughs> yeah, you're almost like, piss off, piss off. But you're like, I love, I love them really. Like that is the feeling. It's like honestly on your bike. But yeah, I do love you. <laughs> no, there was a lot of anger in that. <laughs> He's drooling all over me. Honestly, um, I'm glad I've opened this. Uh, um, Kilkerran an eight year old, it is fantastic. No, this Lafroic is divine. It is actually it? smells completely like the smoke from my cigar. Mm. That's really funny. That's of course, it's it's hard to distinguish the, uh, because it's right next to each other, right? But uh, there's a great similarity, and it's actually quite sweet and uh, palatable for six percent. I've watered it down a little bit. Uh, yeah. But there's good viscosity to it. It's nice and fruity. It's very thick. 
this card today is good. Well, this is 57.1%, and I honestly feel like, I don't feel like that's going to last very long. Um, I'm not gutted that I opened it. Not that I wanted to wait any longer, but now that it's opened, I don't think it's going to last long. <laughs> Oh, there's a, a very strong mentally note in the back. Very herbaceous. Yeah. Uh, oh, man. But uh, the thing is, why I really wanted this, uh, uh, of course, it was the availability of the bottle, but also because this is the last 10-year-old cast strength before uh, Centauri took over. Oh, really? So, uh, everything after is, is going to be crap. <laughs> because we all, know, we all know what happened to Laphroaig over the past years. I had uh, just a little bit left in a small bottle from uh, uh, the quarter cask from 2012. Yeah. And I compared it to a dram. I, had. I thought it, it's one of those safe drams you, you have at a bar, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't know what to order. You've had a couple of beers. Ah, let's just do a quarter cask, right? It's always good. And it was shite. It was thin. It was not flavorful. I thought, what the hell is going on? So I asked for the bottle, and it was a quite recent bottling. I thought, wow, this. Is... Yeah. Uh, it's not Centauri, by the way. It's not Centauri, uh, but it is a Japanese company. No, I think uh, Centauri are um, they're Bomor, aren't they? Yeah, uh, they're. What is the owner of Lafroy again? Uh, they're messing things up. It's not they're messing things up. See, I'm not big on the uh, the owners of things. I, I definitely should as a, a whiskey reviewer and a whiskey YouTuber. Um, the policy they have is just, it sucks. It's it's not Nika, because Nika, Nika are Ben Nevis. Um, I'm pretty sure Somebody. it's Suntory are, uh, sorry, get your phone out, Google it. I'm pretty sure Suntory are... Um, Let me see. Uh, owner, the Freud. I'm trying to think who it could be. Um, Beam Centauri, yeah. Is it Centauri? Centauri. I don't know what they did. But they just want to turn out as many editions as possible. You get the four, the four oak, and and that that sort of shit. But they also really devaluated it. The regular ten in the cost string. Um, we've got Matt back in. So, Matt, just to let you know, uh, we gave it to the audience who. who decided basically which FOMO bottle we would open. Um, so You're I'm currently drinking day, the 15-year-old uh, bourbon wood that you bought me at the open day in 2019. Um, and it's absolutely fantastic. And I'm gutted that I've opened it because it's probably going to get finished now quite quick. Uh, yeah, so Tony's saying Beam Suntory is right. And uh, Matt's saying it's Bowmore and Laffy. Yeah, I was almost certain the old Bowmore, but I didn't know. When did they purchase uh, Laphroaig? Well, about about ten years ago. It was it? I didn't think it was. Yeah. I, I didn't know that. I did not know that. And since then, uh, the quality has been dwindling. So this is basically the. But here, I, I don't, you can't make it out on the camera. But the the, the tears in the glass, they, they were phenomenal. Yeah. So that that's basically if you like your wines, that's that's a testament's quality, and in whiskey, for me actually the the times I, I've tried it to analyze it when I took the time it almost always worked uh, in terms of viscosity and viscosity in a whiskey is is a testament to quality definitely yeah yeah, yeah definitely the more oils the more um, time it's had with maturation can add to the, the viscosity of it yeah, also a slow maturation taking your time yeah, yeah. Card. Um, I, I can't I'm not a big fan of wine uh, wine sends me I don't know if you know this word. It sends me doolally. Um, I don't know if that word's English. I'm pretty sure it's Scottish. So uh, doolally is um, Scottish for uh, uh, crazy. Uh, so it sends me doolally. It sends me loopy. Uh, when I drink wine, I think I have a bad time. <laughs> or I have a good time, but I have a, other people have a bad time. It doesn't make no. me aggressive, but it just makes me a bit over the place. Uh, I mean, whiskey yeah. I can drink all night, but wine, I have a couple of drops of that. Maybe one glass would be fine. So I can't really get into it. I can't get into the flavours. It's something I want to experience more for the uh, exploration of whiskey in general. But no, wine, uh, no, wine doesn't. I, I get what you mean. Uh, uh, we try to uh, 
put it, put it in distinctive uh, uh, experiences of alcohol the other day. Mm -hmm. And beer sort of makes, uh, because it's so low in alcohol usually, yeah. uh, unless you're drinking the strong Belgian beers that you like as well, the Delirium instrument. Oh, right? yeah. Uh, th that gets you uh, drunk quickly uh, yeah. and tired as well. Uh, but uh, normally, a lager or just a nice car scale, uh, it will keep you energized. The only thing right. is that it, it's such a volume of liquid that you yeah. have to pee a lot, and that pee makes you tired because your stomach fills up. Uh, yeah. But you, you just shut up after a while, and, and then you go for a whiskey, and you're done. But with yeah. wine, even after two or three glasses, the, depending on your energy uh, you can be gone uh yeah. drunk already and and you become really i don't know uh you lose yourself a bit and with whiskey i have i have a completely different uh experience, experience. I, I just yeah. i just get tired and when i get tired i lose my interest and i just yeah. think oh, i will go to sleep there's yeah. never a moment where i lose myself or where I, I go too far. Yeah, yeah I'd agree. The, the, the worst I've taken to whiskey is... Uh, wine I've, often. Yeah, the worst I've taken to whiskey is maybe I've been sick or whatever. But there's never been a point where I... Uh, maybe not blackout, but almost can't remember things. Whereas wine, for some reason, if uh, the limited experience I've had with wine, maybe once or twice, it just destroys me. Um, <laughs> well, you say eat food with wine, it makes a difference and adds to the taste. I have heard that. Uh, That's true. Good for dinner. Yeah. Matt, Matt says don't mix the grape with the grain. <laughs> That's where I don't agree. I would Actually, never do that. Uh, I've had tastings where I tried a couple of beers before, uh, yep. but that that puts me in a, a berserk mood. Right? You know, uh, the whiskey, uh, the beer makes uh, it gets the Viking out of you. You, yeah. you become more boisterous and uh, masochist and that, that that kind of vibe. Whereas wine sort of uh it's much more a combination of sweet and sour so it actually prepares your palate very well right. for drinking whiskey it's also a little bit higher in abv yeah so you're already accustomed to uh, a stronger drink so one glass of wine with dinner is perfect for having yeah. whiskey after. um the cat is now starting to try and chew away at my cable <laughs> <laughs> So I think, what is uh, Willie saying? A half and half. Uh, a half and half is a, a half and half. So I don't know whether he's yeah, saying Yeah, I know it. I know it from Ralphie's book. Yeah, I hope he's saying a half with uh, a half a beer and a half a uh, whiskey. I hope it's not a half a wine and a half a whiskey. That's really traditional, right? Yeah, yeah, a half and a half, yeah. I mean, we um, there's, there's a pub crawl uh, near to us, Linlithgow pub crawl, they have about... Uh, 12 pubs in the street or something or, or maybe more and yeah you usually get a pint and a half you usually want to get a, a pint and a half to do pub crawl because a pint is too easy you need to go for the half you need to have like the morgans and um lemonade the morgans and cola or you need to have the the, the pint and the whiskey uh because supposedly a, a pint's too easy for us uh, scots um yeah two or 25 minutes i think it's time to probably end it um and what, honestly, this has been brilliant. It's um, like we've known each other for a while. Uh, we have been speaking for the last year or two since we've since I've created Instagram. Um, but it's honestly like speaking to someone I've known for ages, um, for a long time. It's good just to be able to talk this. Like I said, the, the drink obviously helps, but it's it's still good. Uh, never ever once felt like there's been a, an awkward silence or anything. Um, and I've enjoyed myself, and it's good hearing your experiences as well. I so hope to see you soon. Uh, the plan is still uh, to go to Scotland in October. Mm. And uh, as I said, we'll, we'll stick to the, the plan was to go to Glasgow, not Glasgow, uh, uh, and to visit uh, Okatoshian Distillery and Glengoyne. Yep. Uh, uh, Glengoyne, not too far from Glasgow at all. No, exactly. And, I mean, uh, you've Deanston on the way as well. It's not as far. No, but it was just uh, t t taking, a t uh, taking an Uber or a taxi to Ogdenshire. Uh, supposedly, they have a nice tour and they have really, yeah. really good value casks. 
Right. Uh, Glen Goyne, obviously, the, the Blending Your Own uh, tour yep. is supposed to be great. And after that, we were planning on taking the train down to, uh, I forget the, the place at the coast where you can take the ferry to Aaron. Yeah, yeah, uh, um, yeah. It's only an hour with a train from uh, yeah. from Glasgow and uh, and we were supposed to spend three days on Aaron before going back and I think we'll uh, we'll try to uh, plan that trip uh, which has sadly uh, been cancelled for uh, for this April uh, to try to do it in, in October but it, yeah. it depends on everything and yeah, yeah. of course uh, the UK is a little bit volatile still um, but I definitely we we'll need to, um if you're coming over we we'll need to, I'll need to try and get if, as long as I'm not working we we'll need to try and get together It'd be good to um, have a drink with yourself and Matt definitely um, definitely I think right. Matt, Matt Matt is planning to tag along uh, yeah I've, I've even tried to plan it uh, the way that he's not going to be offshore yeah you need well I was going to say we could we could try and plan it around Matt um when he's offshore it would probably be better. I mean, he, d he does support, in fact, no, used to her, used to her in the same boat with Celtic and Fire and all that's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he's forgiven us. It's, it's, been, uh, <laughs> it's been 50 years, so... Uh... Uh, Adrosin, yes, that is right. Uh, Mark's right. Adrosin, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Adrosin. Yeah. Uh, and the west side is Adrosin. Uh, Tony's saying, great stuff. Hope Stevie gets well soon. I'm sure he will. Send him our best wishes, and I will Definitely. do. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Him. Um, honestly, the cat is trying to chew through my charger cable, um, and I haven't wanted to shout on a live stream, so <laughs> just <fun. laughs> Um, yeah, so everybody, thanks for watching. Uh, I've had a great time, and I hope you've had a good time too. But me too. Uh, thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to my YouTube debut. And, YouTube uh, debut. I, I loved it, and uh, it was uh, well, it was just lovely and <laughs> magic. Um, I'll enjoy this uh, this Lafroy car strength and Mirko. You know it's open. Uh, <laughs> it's open for you to come by and have a sip as well. Brilliant! Cheers. Cheers. Thank you, Stewie.